nothing will dampen the atmosphere here at the IAAF World Athletics Championships. We have had an absolutely superb five days so far and some great action to come here on the sixth evening. Pretty wet out there on sections of the track, but the two bends will be dry and that will be relevant very soon because Isaac McQuala of Botswana, as we look at the crowd, they're going through their warm-ups with the hedgehog mascot, getting everybody to do a few dance moves. Isaac McQuala is out on the track on his own, having served his official quarantine period. He's being given an opportunity to run a heat of the 200 on his own. It will be a time trial, and he'll have to run as fast as, if not quicker, than 20.53. If he does that, he'll be advanced through to the semi-finals later on this evening. So just before we see him run his solo 200, here's a full lineup of what's in store this evening. The heats of the 3000 steeplechase for the women, qualification in the long jump and the hammer. Mo Farah back out on the track in the heats of the men's five. The women's shot put final. Some really good opportunities there in the absence of Valerie Adams. Qualification in the men's hammer, if it happens, we're hearing rumours it may be postponed until tomorrow because of the weather. The three men's 200 semis, and then the men's 400 metre hurdles final. Karen Clement going for an unprecedented third world title, but it would be his first since Berlin in 2009. And the women's 400 metre final will round things off just before 10 o'clock. Alison Felix, the defending world champion, Shawnee Miller Weibo is the reigning Olympic champion. They were separated by just a few hundreds last year in Rio, and it could be very close again this time round. And there is Isaac McQuala. So the reason he has to run 20.53, that is the qualifying time of the slowest, fastest loser through to the semi finals. And he would be added to one of the three semis coming up in around about two hours 15 minutes lots of rain lots of cloud and it is cold this evening here in the stadium been difficult for all the athletes getting ready for the action tonight and maybe the conditions will favor the european based runners who are more used to training and competing in the driving wind and rain and alongside me in the commentary box this evening, Catherine Merry and Steve Obet. They're wrapped up and warm and ready for the evening's drama to unfold. Well, as you say, Rob, it is wet in the warmer pair, isn't it? See some of the female long jumpers. Their qualification here tonight. And as you mentioned, continuing in the sprint events. It really isn't good conditions, but as an athlete, Steve, you, well, we just, you have to get on with it, right? It stops for no man. It obviously makes things a little bit harder, as Rob mentioned, potentially delaying some of the throwing events. I think in the throwing events, it's essential they have uh, dry circles to, to throw off of. It's very dangerous otherwise, but for most of the other athletes, yes, it's, it's raining. Well, it's, it's Britain. This is summer, isn't it, really? And I think that uh, they've just got it used to it. It's unilaterally across the board. We all have to compete in it. It is a bit more difficult, I think, in the events like the 5K, which we are seeing tonight with Mo Farah obviously going for the double, because there you've got the rain coming off the track onto your legs, you know, creating, I suppose, a little bit of cold. There he is, actually, Mo. Look, he's, he's got a his wetsuit on. He's got a big hat. I mean, he's probably got a change of clothing, too, because if you warm up after warming up, you want to put something else warm on afters. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a problem, but it's for everybody. You know, that's the thing. But in the 5,000, I think perhaps rather than the sprints, although it's difficult, 5,000, you've got rain coming off of everybody in front of you. You know, it completely soaks you. You get colder quickly, and then uh, all sorts of problems happen. We go quickly back, though, to this individual 200 metres by Makwala. OK, I'd like to bring Catherine in as we go through this time trial. 20.53, bearing in mind how fast he has run already this year, not just over the four, but over the two. On his own, no problem. You'd think not, 19.77 seconds, the world leader ahead of Wade Van Niekerk. It's just what kind of shape he's in after the issues that he has had. Of course, it's within his compass, 
comfortable sub 20 second run up but this is a different scenario isn't it we have seen it before in major championships we've had solo runs we've had runoffs for qualification times but this is a big moment for Isaac Mikwala he's had his issues the last couple of days and now he's got one chance to get back in and continue his quest over the 200 meters so just to reiterate it's 20.53 or faster just a reminder, it's that time because that was the time set by the slowest of the fastest losers through to tonight's three semi-finals. No redrawn lanes. Makwala, we assume, will be added to lane one in one of the three semi-finals, but only if he matches or betters 20.53. And quite frankly, we were disappointed we didn't see him in the final of the four last night. We're glad, from a neutral's point of view, that the fastest man in the world this year is here and does have an opportunity, if fully fit, to show us just how good he is. And maybe, maybe, if he comes through this challenge and the semis tonight, maybe challenge Wade van Niekerk, who was miles clear in that very impressive 400 win late last night. So this very special one-off heat, Isaac McQuala against the clock. Crowd giving him an absolutely massive reception. Now watch the track here as he comes round, because where he's running now is totally dry, but it will get very wet down the home straight. 20.53. He's absolutely motoring here. 20.20. Yes. Oh, still got room for the press ups. What a showman. And I think he was proving a point to everyone there, not just himself. Isaac McQuala is in the semi-finals later tonight. Faster than all but six of the other qualifiers. And they didn't run in the rain and they didn't run on their own. McQuala's back and he's healthy. It was good, wasn't it? It's so strange, isn't it, as track and field fans to watch just one man. But that was wonderful to watch. You could tell he was flying. Even though there were no other competitors in the race, his turnover, his cadence, he ran a very tidy bend, and the transition into the straight was smooth. Look at that. So, so, so efficient. We know how good he is. Sub 44 seconds this year, over 400. Sub 20 seconds. He did it in the same afternoon in about a three-hour span. His speed endurance has helped him out there because with the issues that he's had, and as you mentioned, Rob, not too many have run faster than that. So he'll slot into those semi-finals. Nobody, as Rob said, will be removed. It's Isaac McQuala that will be added. And we'll see him come back later. And that will be the question, isn't it? If he has had problems, it's now can he come back in a few hours' time and repeat that and potentially go faster? Well, he ran that great double, didn't he, at 400 and 200. So, yeah, I think he's capable of doing it. The, the interesting thing, though, he looked really determined, like a man that's really been... Uh, hard against it in getting to this stage where he can get the qualifying and I think you had a point to prove and how tough will it be Catherine because we know whichever of the semis is in he's going to be in lane one will that give him a problem because he won't be used to running in lane one because when he goes to diamond leagues he, he gets one of the favored lanes not with the form that he was in and potentially he still is in look at that he's bossing out one or two three press ups there that was impressive. That's what we want to see. Going forward to the semi-finals, the best guys in the world. Just proving his fitness even more there with knocking out five or six. Probably about three or four more than Rob Walker next to me. Well, with a lot better technique. Well, I'm glad it's a 200. Imagine if they do it to Mo Farah. Had to run a 5K on his own before he ran the heats or qualified again for the final. But there you are. There's the overall 200 metres men. Yes, and we see the little Q. That's the most relevant name. Third from the bottom, Isaac McQuala, the fastest man in the world this year, will join all the rest in the semi-finals. Uh, we are local time now, quarter to seven in the evening, and those 200 semis coming up at five to nine. So if you're planning on going out and missing a little bit of our action, please do make sure you come back and join us for the men's semis, and we will round off with the men's four hurdles and the women's 400 metres. And look at this, an interested observer. <laughs> Wade Van Nieker, Catherine, waiting for the medal presentation of the men's four. Nice. Generous, generous there. Yeah, I, I, I think Wade said it yesterday, didn't he? He wants the best athletes to race against and he'll relish that semi-final later. Good stuff.
Okay, so the Makwana episode is over. Now we have an opportunity to salute some of the great performances from yesterday evening. Oh, what a race in the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Presenting the medals, Bernard Amsalem. Bernard Amsalem, IAAF council member, will make the presentation. And what a great bronze medal. For the very first time, an American man will stand on the world championship podium. Silver in the Olympics last year, but so far for Evan Yeager, he's come up blank at the world champs. Brilliant run, took it on with four to go, realising that he had to drop some of the fast finishing Kenyans, including, by the way, Ezekiel Kenboy, the four-time champion who announced his retirement immediately after the end of the race. He jogged across the line in 11th. Great bronze medal for Jaeger, at last putting an American on the podium in this event. What a season it's turned out to be for Sufyan El Bakali. He was in tears after the race, followed the winner all the way home, got his lifetime best down from something like 8.14 to 8.05 this season. The performance of his life, and he's been rewarded with the World Championship silver medal. Looks like he still can't believe it. And the champion completing his collection and his fiery eyes and celebration as he crossed the line showed you exactly what this means to Conceslas Caputo, world youth champion, world junior champion, Olympic champion, and after two successive silvers behind Ezekiel Kenboy, this time it was Conceslas Caputo's turn to complete the global collection. He is quite some talent. And for a man as young as he is, he may well be around at the top for many more years to come. Conceslas Kipruto now hears the Kenyan national anthem. Caputo because earlier in the season he had dropped out uncharacteristically at one of the Diamond League races with ankle problems and I thought I saw him limping on his lap of honour last night so he clearly came here still feeling that ankle not 100% but he delivered a fine fine performance Caputo, Elbacali and Jaeger three worthy medalists Still absolutely hammering with rain here this evening. Now I'm hearing that possibly the men's hammer may be postponed, but we will keep you updated on that one. Hopefully the the officials will be drying out the circle at the moment. Touch wood for the hammer fans out there. It does look like that will be happening this evening. So the 3,000 metre steeplechase was a fantastic race and so too Steve Ovet, the Hammer boys there just uh, going through their pre-qualifying preparations and so too last night, if the three steeple was good, the men's eight was absolutely brilliant. Well, one of the most exciting races perhaps in the uh, 800 metres that I've seen for some time really. It had everything and it didn't really settle itself out as far as the medals was concerned until the last 20 metres or so. Wow. Yapik just coming out now. 
into the rain, I'm afraid, for their medal ceremonies, but uh, I don't think they'll be too disappointed with that. Smiles all around. The medals are again by Bernard Amsalem, the IWF council member. In third place, the young, talented Kenyan, Kip Yegon Bet, who won the World Junior Championships. Coming now to third place in the World Senior Championships. He did the best he could, he ran really hard, and in the end, came away with that bronze medal. And in silver medal. Well, we expected this man to finish fast, but my word, it was an exceptional finish. Adam Schott, third in the Olympics, second last time in the World Championships, again picks up the silver medal. He came from nowhere. Now there you are, two silvers for this man at these championships. Can't ask for more than that, but perhaps, perhaps the real, the real man that dominated the race took it by the scruff of the neck, and then really ran away from everybody else. Boss of France, he loves it. He was so, so excited. He actually said afterwards, "I'm not the best athlete in the world, but I ran the race." That mattered tonight, and it certainly did, it really did. Absolutely superb. But he was fourth at Olympics, fifth at the World Championship. I think he was more surprised than anybody else at the end that he actually won the goal. Saying the Marseillaise, they did me very well indeed, and he's so pleased with that performance. And last night, France had a great night, really. This man winning the gold, and Ronald Lavrini getting the bronze medal in the pole vault for men. Well, Lavrini said that he inspired him to keep going and trying hard in that pole vault. France's first gold medal of these championships. Why they have to keep biting the medals anymore? It's not made of gold, I'm afraid, no more. It's uh, that was changed some time ago, <laughs> but, the, but the actual gesture still lingers on. Great race, really was fast, entertaining for yet again a massive crowd last night. He was also saying, Steve, that. I didn't have a race plan. He just went in and went with it. And the Frenchman, as you say, absolutely delighted. And the crowd, even though it's pouring down with rain, is packing themselves in. For the sixth night of action at the IAAF World Athletic Championships. So the medal ceremony for the men's 400 meters. The question was, could the world record holder from South Africa, Wade Van Niekerk, defend his title? 
and he did in some style. A wonderful run from the Bahamian Gardner. An outstanding finish from Haroon of Qatar. But it's the man that comes back to this track later on, at just before 9 o'clock UK time for the semi-finals of the 200 metres. That picked up the gold medal once again. Anna Ricardi, IAAF council member, given the duty. Of handing the three medals over for the men's 400 meter final. Abdelayla Haroun of Qatar finished like an absolute train. 48.48 seconds, a season's best. He was nigh on last at about 100 meters to go, was the Qatari. Rewarded with a World Championship bronze medal. A silver medal. Well, it went to the Bahamas and Stephen Gardner. 44.41 seconds. Lowered his own national record in the semi final to 43.89. He couldn't reproduce that time, but he did reproduce a great run to pick up the silver medal behind the South African. The boy wonder from the Bahamas. Silver medalist over the one lap distance. But the champion of the world, gold medalist, he defended gold his title. 43.98, Wade Van Niekerk. He said it was cold last night. The final run at 10 to 10 UK time. He ran the top bend, put himself in a wonderful position, and the South African picked up the gold medal once again. First part of his quest to do the double, the 200-400 double that hasn't been done since Michael Johnson in 2005. Part one done for the South African. to world champion will go away compose himself and come back for those 200 meter semi-finals later but part one is done for the south african it really was a good race south africa bahamas and qatar the three medalists in the men's 400 meters and it's turning out to be a good championship for the south africans catherine manyonga taking the gold i think samai may have got the bronze in that one Kesta Semenya got a bronze in the 15 and will be favourite in the 800 metres. And Van Nieker can come back, as you said, and have a crack at the 400-200 double. So it really has been a great few days for the Rainbow Nation here in London. Not too much time for Van Nieker to celebrate. He's got to go and get himself ready for the 200 semis coming up in a couple of hours' time. Well, impressive, Catherine, not just from the South Africans who are currently in third. Kenyans going well. And you know what's impressive about the Americans, I think, it's the range of events in which they're winning medals. Women's marathon, men's 3,000 steeplechase. It's not just the sprints where they've, you know, turned that rivalry in their direction. 
against the Jamaicans for now. They're, they're really starting to produce medals across the board. Well, they are. Just the one so far for Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Mo Farah over that 10,000 metres. But what an impressive range, the number of nations that are winning medals here at the World Championships. And a lot more to be handed out. And of course, including here tonight, as we've mentioned in the women's shot put final and the 400 metre hurdles for men and the 400 metres for the women later. So the first field event final of the evening will be the shot put. That's coming up in around about an hour's time. Before that, we have qualifying for the women's long jump and the men's hammer. And there's qualification group A in the women's long jump. Down the back straight here at the London Stadium. Tiana Bartoletta one of the pre-event favourites from America. She'll be in this qualification group A, Ivana Spanovic as well. So two groups that will run along, alongside each other on the back straight. And there's qualification group B. Brittany Reese from the USA, the world champion on many occasions. Kabare of Nigeria as well, ran here in the sprint events earlier in this championships. So the women's long jump qualifying. Qualification distance required to go straight through to the women's long jump final will be 6 metres and 70. Or the top 12 to that final on Friday. And if you look at the world list in the women's long jump in this world championship season, Two athletes have gone over seven metres. Brittany Reese and Tiana Bartoletta. And it's due to be a very competitive event. So very shortly, the qualification groups will get underway. All chasing the distance of six metres and 70, which many athletes, probably 10 or 12 athletes in the world, have gone past this year. Yes, we will keep you posted on that qualification in the long jump and the women's shot put final are starting in around about an hour and 20 minutes time. So we've had our first solo run on the track from Isaac McQuala. Now we have the first round of the women's 3,000 metre steeplechase. Three heats, pretty brutal qualification actually. Ruth Chibet, the world record holder, and Chespol, well, she's just been absolutely incredible. I think she's still a teenager, she has the African record and the world junior record. It's fairly tough, this. Three heats, first three from each, plus six fastest losers. So this is an event where we really do need to watch the clock. And it will be interesting to see if the slower finishing athletes decide to really pull the pace on. Here's the lineup for the first of the three heats. Jeff Kamoy is the defending champion. Really good quality here. Getanet there of Ethiopia, world junior silver medalist last year. Safira Safer of Ethiopia got a silver medal here in London five years ago and a bronze in Moscow. And Purity Karui of Kenya is the Commonwealth champion. She also starts in this one. So there is Karui, looks a, a little bit cold. It is very, very fresh this evening. We're, we're pretty cold up here in the commentary box. Hopefully the athletes will warm up a little bit once they get going. There's a safer. Just missed the medal in Beijing last year. Danwa next to her. Lenny Wade to Great Britain. Getting a great reception. Second at two successive editions of the European Team Championships. There was Get to Net. Quickly, very fast athlete as well. He's gone 9.25 this season. And there is Hyvin Chepkamoy, second fastest in the world this year, the defending champion, the Olympic silver medalist, 12 months ago. So only the first three here. So as I said, it will be interesting to see whether they decide to get going here or whether the fancied athletes think they can 
leave all the work to the last 400 meters. The first of three heats in the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase begins. And it is the Commonwealth champion, Purity Karui, on the outside with Hyvin Chekkoi running her on her inside. The defending champion, the Olympic silver medalist, the two Kenyans going straight to the front, deciding to dominate the early pace and, and set the early rhythm in this well, opening. They are setting a rhythm. It's not very fast, actually, Rob, but uh, maybe they've been a bit cautious here. The track is still wet. You can see they've just come around. It's a strange situation at the moment. Half the track is wet, half the track is dry. But I suppose with the steeplechase, it's not going to be too much of a problem because they've obviously got the water jump to contend with as well. But you can see there that the water is coming up onto the legs of the athletes. And no, no one really likes that too much. It does cool you down. So they're spreading out a little bit more than perhaps they would usually do in the early stages of this race. When I mean spreading out, I mean literally coming out into lanes two and three to stop the water from coming up. Kirui there is looking very comfortable just in the middle of the pictures they are controlling the rhythm but the rhythm as I said not fast Rob no it's pretty pedestrian by Chep Kamoy and Karui standards another athlete we should mention who is up there right on the inside just shaded there by Chep Kamoy is Krauser Gesa Felicitas Krauser really good runner from Germany got the bronze last uh, two years ago rather in Beijing and was six last year in Rio she's on the inside she's quite a fast athlete Still no move yet from the Ethiopian Asafa, who's running towards the left-hand side there. All the women safely through that water jump, but this is absolutely pedestrian. Yeah, this is this is living dangerously, really. Yeah, they've got to start pushing it on. Maybe the Kenyans now start realising it. Quickly, America's in the middle of that picture. She's tucked in in about, what, fourth place at the moment. Yes, I think someone now must start thinking that they've got to start pushing it on. It is only three to qualify. You can't leave it to the last part of the race because you're leaving it down to those that have got the finish in their legs that are not probably strong but they're the fastest in the race and I did notice Steve about 150 metres or so ago Getanet of Bahrain the expatriated Ethiopian just gave Purity Karui a shove in the back as they found themselves running far too close together heading towards one of the barriers and that was the point at which the Commonwealth champion decided to go to the front. I just saw Sidi Medina Morocco just moving through there, but she's been pushed back a little bit. Now, it is a lot of pushing and shoving going, as you say. They're uh, keeping themselves, as I said, spread out into lane three sometimes to avoid problems on the track. But it is still slow. They really are running slow. I don't know whether it's the weather, they're cold, or whether they just think they can out sprint everybody. But they've just got to be careful. Well, if the first two heats are slow, Steve, really slow and tactical, surely if you were one of the athletes in the third of the heats and you didn't think you could out-sprint the favourites, it would be in your interest to hammer the pace early on because there is always the potential with six fastest losers that one heat, in theory, could get nine through. Well, that's the theory, but theory doesn't always actually work. The city maintain the Jet Kamoy's looking across all the time, seeing what's going on. Karui just on the inside. They're just sort of like running at almost a jog pace here for most of these women and yeah, I think it's going to be a case of someone really so decided they've had enough Sidi Madang there coming through the Moroccan just to take up the lead the two Kenyans happy with that Asafa just on the outside there so really at the moment Sidi Madang deciding now maybe we've got to start making this a decent race and good on her she's working hard and there's a gap though I don't know why they're not going with her but there's a gap of about six meters so far that's good work from the Moroccan second in the world youth a few years ago she was 14th in Beijing and didn't manage to make the final in Rio last year so she hasn't completely run away from them but she's clearly decided okay if I'm in a group with the likes of a safer Quigley Krauser the defending champion Chet Kamoy and Purity Karui the Commonwealth champion I don't think necessarily I can out sprint them for one of the three spots so I'm going to now hit the front try and inject a little bit of pace and give myself half a chance of maybe going through as one of the fastest losers good decision there from the Moroccan yeah she's doing as best she can you get the feeling though that it's what four laps to go and about two maybe three laps the Kenyans will start moving through and so too you know obviously a Safa of Ethiopia just to make the rhythm hard over the last two or three laps because these women those three I've just mentioned can run sort of close almost to, to nine minutes these other women are struggling to get their PBs close to about 9.15 to 9.26 so the class at the moment is hanging back. 
and there's always the danger here Steve as actually she slowed down again the Moroccan and they're once again tightly bunched only two athletes have drifted off the back there's always a danger when they're running this close together there's another bit of shoving going on there that they could accidentally catch each other's heels and one or two could go down well, we've seen it before Rob but it could happen again but let's hope not in this race so it's disappointing I suppose for some of these athletes who really maybe should have pushed the pace on a little bit more if they stood a chance of trying to get through as well some of the fastest losers there's a big three in this one there they are the two Kenyans out in front at the moment Kamoi, Karui and also if you've got a Safa here the Olympic silver medalist as well in this race surely someone should start taking it up trying to get in there and break it up a little bit and make it a decent race to get one of the qualifiers as the fastest losers amazing shot this from what they call spider cam quickly tucked in in fifth place with Krauser alongside her and once again they really slowed down three laps to go then in this the first of three heats in the women's 3000 meter steeplechase well, a lot of these women in this race will be quite happy for a slow taste obviously if it went really hard then um, they may find themselves suffering but even if they are happy with the pace they can't let this linger too much because it will boil down to who has the fastest kick not the best steeplechases in the event really and the disadvantage you have of being in the first of the heats here is that you don't know if it is a slow one there is no guarantee that any of the fastest losers would come from this first heat you're putting it out there for the athletes in the second and third heats to know exactly what they've got to do they did improve and increase the pace a little bit on that second kilometer but you're leaving it out there for the others in the second and third heat to have a crack if you're in fourth, fifth or sixth and it's slow, you're living dangerously. Well, quickly now, America moving through on the inside. Slightly, um, maybe, got to be careful there because you can actually go across that line up the water jump and, and be disqualified. So they have to make sure that they don't go across that line coming over the water jump. Quickly came through and quickly had to literally pull herself back into that lane in order not to get DQ'd. But here we go again. There's still a group of, what is it? 12 of these athletes coming through with just two laps to go in the women's steeple chase first heat less than 800 meters to go then in this first heat of the steeple chase madane has been leading she was off the front by around about five to ten meters but she's been swallowed by the pack and is once again at the front but it's a very comfortable pace for most of these world-class women karumi is in second place the commonwealth champion with her compatriot Chepkamoy, the taller of the two Kenyans, on the inside in third as the defending champion and the safer, the Olympic medalist from here in London five years ago, coming up on the outside. And remember, the very talented American Quigley right on the inside there trying to get in the mix but they're all beginning to queue up for what could turn out to be a last lap burn up yeah they are just coming around the outside there i just saw ghent of bahrain uh, the expatriate kenyan coming through now into what is it sixth place so there's another danger woman coming through at the moment this time they will come round with one lap to go and it's still the moroccan leading Jet Kamoy looking over her shoulder there just to see where Karui is. They take the bell in this, the first of three heats in the women's 3000 meter steeplechase. It has been pretty pedestrian so far, and a little mini break is on here. Good running by Madane, the Moroccan, to set the pace. Jet Kamoy is the defending champion. She's on the Moroccan's outside, a safer who was on the podium here five years ago and then it's Krauser and Quigley with Karui the Commonwealth champion just trying to work very very hard to get back to this leading five only the first three remember will be guaranteed a passage through to the final on Friday and it's been slow so we may not get fastest losers here there's quality in this leading group and a little bit of bumping and barging going on there Karui trying to close that gap just gave quickly a little bit of a shove and she landed awkwardly there to Kenyon which is why the gap has opened up between the leading five and her good running here from Krauser she wants to make absolutely certain the bronze medalist from two years ago stuttered a little into that barrier Krauser making certain Chet Kamoy the defending champion will be there so too quickly she ran really well Karui the Commonwealth champion just coming through for four she'll have to wait to see if she can go through as one of the fastest losers as the best of the rest 
come home, including Lenny Waite, a very tired figure there, just a few seconds inside 10 minutes. Well, Krauser did everything she needed to, but they were so slow early on, Steve, they left it to the sprinters to get themselves comfortably through for the final. Well, they certainly did, and Krauser made good, uh, good work of that, really, the German. Very slow time, 9.39.86. Well, that's disappointment really for some of those athletes because they're not going to, I don't think, after that, go through as some of the fastest of the losers. So as the athletes make a hasty exit out of the rain, Daya Klashina in the women's long jump qualifying, competing as an authorised neutral athlete. It's the Russians' first attempt at the competition. Remember, six metres and 70, automatic qualifying. Oh, you see the big blue line? Here's the six metre and 70 line. She gets the white flag. Always so tidy and efficient technically. Seven metre five jumper six years ago, Klashina. 6.75 season's best. Decent on the board, no athlete yet getting near the 6 metres and 70. You can see the wet on the runway, so some parts of this track are actually shaded from any of the rain. But 6 metres and 51, a solid opening jump. Beck of Ukraine. European junior bronze medalist back in 2013 and a European under 23 bronze medalist this season. Six metres and 59, but she has gone near seven metres at her best last year. So first attempt. Two big pools of athletes, 30 in total, trying to qualify for this women's long jump final. Perfect on the board, simple hang technique. Oh, look at that. So, six metres and 35 for Beck of Ukraine. The other pool, as I mentioned, going on at exactly the same time. Lorraine Ugan of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Her first attempt of the evening. Oh, that's good. Well, home support always helps. And a white flag as well. World Indoor bronze medalist last year in Portland. Had injury problems when she got to the outdoor season last year but that is a very good jump 678 is her best this season oh very close to automatic qualifying six meters and 63 a very good opener for the british athlete tiana bartoletta you can see the rain coming down but the american looking for automatic qualifying here the defending world champion. You can see her speed. She's a 10.78 100 meter runner, Tiana Bartoletta. World class at both long jump and sprints. The height she generates with the speed on the runway. Loves doing both the events. You ask her which she prefers the most. And she's extremely happy, of course, to be world class at both. So Bartoletta, 6 metres and 64, close to the automatic qualifying. Could be good enough if we don't get 12 athletes over 6 metres and 70. We'll take the top 12. So from one American to another, Brittany Reese. She's won a world title every year for five successive years from 2009 to 2013. Became the Olympic long jump champion in 2012. When she gets it right, she absolutely nails it. Seven meters and 13 
this World Championship season. A little bit to give on the board, but that's safe in the first round. Six metres and 50. One jump down, two more if needed to go. Here's the result from the first heat. Krauser running really well, Czech Kamoy, the defending champion. And the reason Karui, the Commonwealth champion, has been promoted to third is because Quigley, the very fast, high-quality American, has been disqualified. And as Steve Ovet pointed out, it looked as though she had run very tight to the left-hand side of the track after the water jump, and that does produce problems occasionally in big races. That's why Ezekiel Kemboy was disqualified, having initially got the bronze last year in Rio. So the hammer now is about to take part. This is the uh, first A group, qualifying distance 75-50, and uh, the great uh, Pavel Fedek there of Poland, about to perhaps defend his world championships here. An interesting character, obviously, in this first round is uh, the young Sergei Litvinov, son of the great Sergei Litvinov, who won the uh, the uh, championships back in 1983. Meanwhile, we go back to the track, the second heat of the women's steeplechase. Fourteen athletes take part, and I would say on, on paper, Rob, probably not as strong as that first heat. You've got the likes of, obviously, Ruth Jabet there, maybe, and, and Kepchoic, but uh, I think in depth, not as much. There she is, the Olympic champion and the world record holder last year. Absolutely fantastic scene, still just 20. But having said that, I don't think there's the depth that we thought that uh, the first heat had. I agree, and I've just gone through the season's bests, Steve, and nine athletes in this race have this season run faster than the quickest, fastest loser time from the first heat. So maybe if, if there are one or two athletes here who don't feel as though they're going to be quick enough in a burn-up on the last lap to make the top three, maybe we'll see a few athletes get out there and make sure that the pace is fast. Well, that was just uh, Ferrix, we're missing the athletes. That was just Ferrix, the uh, um, United States champion. She runs in, well, runs, she's in lane five, Olympic finalist last time round. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I think they've just saw a very slow heat. Yes, most of these athletes can quite easily run faster than that if they try. But whether they dawdle around like we saw in the first uh, heat or not is a question mark. And I think it's Lalonde from Canada that comes right across, maybe, to follow. Yeah, good running early on here. The Canadian trying to come through, and it's... Uh, Chep Koec, who was fourth last year in Rio, she leads at the moment. Very tall, rangy Kenyan as Fente comes up. And, and maybe this is going to be a little bit faster, although it's not lightning quick at the moment, but that first heat, Steve, was very slow in particular. Yeah, this looks, this looks a bit faster, and I think thanks to uh, Chep Koec to push it on a little bit. She's a very strong athlete, obviously, um, runs uh, no, cross country as well. And in the mixed world cross country, she ran the anchor leg and started 12 seconds ahead of Gazzini de Dababu. Well, that's not really something you look forward to, is it? But she held on to the lead most of the way, so she's a real strong runner, and that's why I think she likes getting out there. And also, it's a lot easier, I think, in these conditions to lead maybe a little bit rather than starting to uh, suffer a from the rain and everything else that's going on down there at tracks. So looking over her shoulder, there's Jebet just moving up, just checking one another there, really, weren't they? See what's going on. Technique letting their. Uh, Chip Kovic down a little bit, but it seems as if the world, sorry, the Olympic and uh, world record has decided to push it on pretty fast here. Yes, Jebet, as you said, the world record holder and the Olympic champion, and still only 20. She's got good strength as well, seventh in the world cross earlier this year. But the question as to whether they'd go harder than the first heat has already been answered because they are single file already. Ivana Spanovic of Serbia. Women's long jump qualifying. Seven metres and eight last season. 
very consistent at global championships won medals at the last five championships indoors and outs well she's very close if not bang on to the automatic qualifying distance of six meters and 70. there or thereabouts took the european indoor crown this year in front of her home crowd when she leapt out to seven meters and 24 it was a wonderful competition So she awaits the distance, 6 metres and 62. So a lot of athletes getting close to the automatic qualifying line. Well, back at the uh, second heat of the women's steeplechase. Chepkovic is pushing on as much as she can, and she is really doing a good job. Just behind her, you expect Jebet just latching on. Then in third place, it's Betic of Algeria. Unfortunately, Jeff, we just missed some time ago uh, a bit of a fall, really, from uh, Benta of uh, Ethiopia. She fell very badly in the water chase. She's some way back now in the yellow and red vest, but she is gathering herself, so that's a disappointment. But these two pushing on, it won't really matter, I don't think, too much about the times from these two athletes. We expect uh, these two to do really well. But behind is where the other athletes should be gathering themselves to try and get, uh, obviously, the only other place that's available, plus the fastest losers. Yes, and at the moment, it's Freerix of the United States who made the Olympic final last year. She leads those chasers. But as we said at the start, Steve, nine women in this particular heat have run faster and the quickest of the fastest losers from the first heat. So we really will be keeping our eye on the clock. 9.40 is the fastest of the quickest losers from the first heat. That's the Commonwealth champion, Karui. I beg your pardon, Karui was promoted to third. So it's still 9.40 with Madane of Morocco. So we need to watch the clock because it isn't just about who finishes first, second and third. And Prop's running well on the inside behind the American, the... American who now represents Jamaica and there's a little bit of a gap with third and fourth back to fifth so maybe Trout is getting herself involved here to the battle for the third automatic spot well there's the fall look there it is unfortunately she was right up there really and take of Ethiopia but she really did not just fall she crashed into that water jump how she got back up and back into the race I don't know look at her look she's still struggling there's athletes behind her coming over the jump, almost missing her, treading on her. Well, this is beautiful rhythm now, isn't it? From the uh, the reigning Olympic champion, just easing herself through. Perhaps this is the way she likes to run, just at the front, keeping her rhythm going, not really worrying too much about what's going on behind. And by the way, Steve, yeah, this is really impressive from these two. Chupet is an unbelievable talent for someone who's still 20. Fentu is coming back into this slowly and surely. So we've got the leading four. We've got two packs of two. And there's Fentu just at the top of the home straight. She's now moving through almost level with Muller there. She's in sixth place and she's gone past the athlete just on her inside there, Muller of Denmark. And Fentu, well, what a story it would be if she could get back up and challenge for a top three spot. She certainly has the American and the Jamaican in her sights. Well, as I said, if she could do that, that is impressive. I mean, it's impressive, I think, uh, to actually get up and probably you know, gather yourself to just stand, but she got back up straight away and started running. So, yeah, all credit to her. Let's hope she carries it off. Chowic, though, is just moving ahead now of uh, Jibet. We, these two have just been playing cat and mouse a little bit out in front, not too worried about it. I don't think it's just a he. They're just keeping their rhythm going. Behind what? Well, the gap of what is that? Almost 50 metres now, the other two chasing. Yes, and then it's Fentu leading a little group of three, just heading towards the water jump now. Are uh, now out of shot. And I can confirm the Ethiopian cleared it safely this time. Steve, these two miles clear. At what stage do you start thinking, well, hang on a minute, you know, we've got an advantage of 50 metres or so with two laps to go. Why don't we take our feet off the gas and preserve ourselves for Friday's final? Well, logic would be over the last lap, obviously, you can't slow down too much over the 800-metre over the mark. But having said that, 
it's Kenya, it's Kenya versus Bahrainu, it's, it's Kenya versus Ethiopia. They don't like to lose, um, so they just keep going, I think, to the line. And they maybe just look at the scoreboard. Don't forget, there's this massive scoreboard either end of the straights, so they can look up quite clearly seeing that they're 50 metres or so clear. So there is no real reason to keep the rhythm going, apart from the fact that they're quite comfortable doing so. So, still these two world-class athletes out front. Chep Coetz, the third fastest in the world this year, and Ruth Chebet just behind her. The Olympic champion, the world record holder, and a really good run at the World Cross in Kampala. That was a fantastic edition of the World Cross Country Championships back in March. So much enthusiasm for distance running in Uganda as well as in Kenya and Ethiopia. Well, French uh, from the United States and uh, Fraut of Germany are in third and fourth. And I have to say, Fente now is moving very well in sixth place at the moment. So they take the bell in this second heat of the women's 3,000 metre steeplechase. That's Freerix of the United States in third with Port of Jamaica in fourth. It's the first three to advance as of right. And that's Lalonde of Canada. She's going well in fifth with Fentu behind her in sixth. Fentu recovering from the fall. And she's not going to finish in an automatic spot. But remember, it's not just the first three. There are six fastest losers across the three heats, and the first heat we know was very, very slow. So we do need to watch the clock as the leading two head towards the finish. Well, these two really can take it very easy from here on in. Chepkovic just ahead of the Olympic champion, Ruth Jebet. Whether they're sprint to run, I hope not, because there's no need for it, really. Just behind, as you said, the American, Harich, coming through. She's just lengthening the stride. Again, no need really to do any more than that. Interesting to say though, we get, keep harping back, but Fente of Ethiopia is in now in sixth position, and if she keeps in sixth position, she could make it as the last of the uh, qualifiers by uh, the fact that she's come to this. Sorry, just saying, she should make it through, I think, this sort of time. The time, 9 uh, 90, much faster than that first heat. But Kovic looking very comfortable there with Jebet in second place. Lalonde of Canada in fifth. Well, I think, I hope, anyway, Rob, that uh, that uh, Bente of Ethiopia are just waiting for her time to come up here at the moment. I think it's going to be very fast indeed. Yeah, significantly fast. But we've still got one heat to go, so we'll have to wait and see what sort of rhythm that's run at. No problems really at all for this woman. It is just the heats. Chepkowicz taking it very, very comfortable indeed. There's so too this man, this woman as well, Ruth Jebet. Have a round one. Litvinov now. Uh, competing as one of the uh, neutral athletes in this event. Fifth in the World Champions last time round. Well, that's the qualifying mark. Difficult to see where that hammer landed. Well, it was just short of that. Season's best, 77-32, so he should really be up and around that sort of area. His father, obviously, the great Sergei Litvinov, so this must be Sergei Litvinov the second, I suppose. World champion back in 1983 and then 1987, then the Olympic champion in 1988, so what a pedigree this man's got. Schoderberg now, Finland. 75.50, the qualifying mark. Sixth at the last World Championships. Well, he's shouting that one on. Remember, it's just the qualifying. Again, short. We thought you know, previously that because of the conditions here, because the circle is very wet, that these men would uh, pass up the opportunity tonight and take on the possibility of throwing tomorrow, but they've obviously decided amongst themselves that they will come out and have a go. And I'm not sure that's uh, conducive to long throwing. It might be that some of these qualifiers might come from the distance below the distance of 75.50 anyway. Well, they're taking the opportunity to get away from that area where the uh, hammer is under the cover. 
of the stadium, just uh, behind the Hammer Circle. Sikorski, another of the neutral athletes here. Sees the best 76 23. Holding it together just at the end. I think that could be the first qualifying mark there. If that's the case, it's just on the line. Very controlled. Good lift with the arms right at the very end. Touching that line. Well, there you are, right on the qualifying line, 75.50, so he can put his tracksuit on and uh, go back and uh, have a cup of tea and relax. Our lads of Hungary. Another, well, he really did have a go at that, and I think it has gone, yes, over the qualifying line. So that's, uh, that's going to be marked, and that's the end of his qualifying so far for Ponce Halas. At the 23 champ, just 20 years of age. He looks a lot older, I suppose. He's a big man. There you go, 50, 75, 56. Six centimeters over that qualifying. Quinton Begate of France. Oh, it's gone out and it's gone long too so I take back what I said these men are now starting to pepper over that qualifying mark quite comfortably Quinton Bigot of France French champion first in Luxembourg first in Axe Bain, then Tomberline first in the European throws cup so yeah he's happy with that 76-11 Longest throw so far. Here's the result of the second heat in the steeplechase. Chepkoech and Chebet are through, so too Freerix. Traw, Lalonde, Fente and Kaya are all in fastest loser spots at the moment. Women's long jump qualifying, Chantel Malone. First attempt. Everybody chasing, if possible, the automatic qualifying line of six metres and 70. Well, again, she's one of several athletes at the moment getting close to the automatic qualifying line. Difficult conditions. Around 6 metres and 35 at the moment, there or thereabouts, as she's perfect on the board, is what's sitting in 12th place over the two pools. Because, of course, they'll be combined. It's going to be close, it's going to be around 6.5 metres. Six metres and 52. Back in the hammer, big roar of applause. This man went into the circle, Nick Miller of Great Britain, British, British record holder with 77.55. Oh, speed, there was speed there. That was. Oh, well, that's a good throw. Just on the line again, is it? We'll have to wait and see. Almost out of the sector. A lot of speed. That rotation really took the hammer right out to the left side of the sector. We are just waiting for the distance to come up. 75-52, that's it, qualified for Miller. He's in the final. This is the start list for the third of the heats in the 3,000 steeplechase. 
Serafine Chespol, only 18 years of age, an absolutely massive talent. And Emma Coburn, very fast American, will be hoping that she joins Freerix in the final. And there is Emma Coburn, bronze medalist last year in the Rio Games, six times a national champion. She's the sixth fastest in the world this year. Genevieve Lacaz, Gudnek of Turkey, Bernard Schlumpf of Switzerland, then Karuf Chemetai and Rosie Clark, last year's British champion. Big smile from her. And second from the inside, what an unbelievable talent. Fastest woman in the world this year, second fastest of all time, world junior record and an African record. And she ran 8.58 in Eugene. Bertoni of Italy just gives a little wave on the inside. So, the third of three heats in the women's 3,000 metre steeplechase. As safer, the slowest of the fastest losers with 9.40 at the moment. So it'll be the first three to go through as of right. And just as we saw in the second heat, if these women can make it fast, we may well have more than three going through to the final, which will be on Friday. And it's the Turkish European under-23 champion, Tugba Guvinc, who is leading at the moment, just deciding to make sure it isn't too slow. And really the star in this heat is Serafine Chespol, world youth champion, world junior champion, got a bronze in the world cross in Uganda earlier this year, Chespol running on the left of frame there, some talent at the age of 18, she's already the second fastest athlete in history. Well, sometimes I think age with the Kenyans doesn't really matter too much, it's talent isn't it really, and yeah, this woman certainly has got that. Duro, just coming around the outside there, the other Ethiopian in the steeplechase, very bad conditions, I say, I say for the uh, athletes here tonight in the stadium. It really is pouring down at the moment. So no respite from either the water jump or the rain, really. Chemetai, the Ugandan in second place, just put her right hand out there just to indicate and remind Emma Coburn of the United States, the Olympic bronze medalist, just to give her a little bit of space. And it's very tightly bunched there. Dero, you mentioned, Steve. She's a really good athlete. She's wearing the T-shirt under her vest, which shows you that uh, it is cold. And one of the British girls just fell there at the back at the water jump. Not as big a fall as we saw from Fentu in the first heat. She's back on her feet and just running second from last there. So that's a, a real shame for her. But Dero, the Ethiopian, good runner. Just out of shot at the moment. Fifth here in London five years ago and fifth in Moscow. There she is running in the T-shirt. Yeah, I think that was Clark that actually fell. That was it's not a bad fall, but enough to sort of put her off a rhythm, I think, which is important. At the moment, they're running at a respectable place, and I think that's good because it's it's a possibility that we could get one or two of the fastest losers from this race, but that last race was pretty fast as well. So they'll have to wait and see if the rhythm drops in the middle part of the race. But it looks as if uh, Govic of Turkey is doing a good job. She's pushing on from the front, and the others are quite happy to just to stay behind. Yes, and I just noticed the teenager, Serafine Chespol, taking slightly closer order at the front. Tiny little bit of a gap there with the leading five. I think that's Genevieve Lacaz on the inside in the familiar strip for Australia with Dero of Ethiopia on her outside. Lacaz made a bit of a name for herself at the Commonwealth Games in 2014. I think it was either her 25th or 26th birthday. And after running for Australia in Glasgow, she stormed the stage and was dancing alongside Kylie Minogue. I think people, she, they didn't notice she was there, talking about Lacasse there, just, they didn't notice to begin with because she was dancing so well that I think the organisers thought she was one of Kylie Minogue's official backing singers. So she's, uh, she's a colourful character and she's up there in the mix for a spot in the final at the moment. Chemetai leading with Emma Coburn and then Chespol on the left. We haven't mentioned too much about Winfred Yavi, former Kenyan now representing Bahrain. Sixth in the Rabat Diamond League. She's in third place, but she's a better athlete than that. She's gone 9.22 this season. 
but it is the American now leading Steve. Yeah, good move, really. I mean, we know she's a class act, Coburg, and if she keeps the rhythm going, she might defeat the fact that it's going to be a fast last lap, and I think that's what she really wants. She's a very strong athlete, and I think she knows that uh, to keep this rhythm going now is a good thing, rather than that it's slacken off. So, Coburn from Chemetai, Cheskol, Govinch of Turkey, the European Under-23 champion. She's running well this year, 9.26. She was knocked out in the heats last year, the Turkish athlete. She is only 23, so only just turned 23. She's tucked in on the inside, just a place or two ahead of Lacaz. And Dero closing the gap on the leaders once again. Also, as we should mention Yavi, there she is, a diminutive little Bahrainian on the inside there. It's been tucked in all the time, but she looks you know, very comfortable. She's moving ahead now into second place. So th I suppose you could say that they're starting now, the best athletes are starting to move to the fore. Schlumpf now leads that chase group because we have, what, a leading five with then Dero in sixth and Schumpf in seventh place. She's still close enough, the tall athlete from Switzerland, who was fifth in the Euros last year, that she could close the gap. But they are just beginning now to wind this up a little bit, and now the group is noticeably splintering once again. I think it's Yavi yeah, it's who's Yavi. leading it's now, Yavi. Steve. It's Yavi really still splitting the pace between uh, herself and um, the American Coburg. Just see, it's, it's, say it's almost in your far behind now. This group of four slightly moving away from the others, but the gap now with three laps to go isn't significant. The others can come back and you get the feeling that maybe the Ethiopian there, Dero, is closing down now to make it five up there at the front. Inside the last three laps, in this, the last of the three heats in the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Yavi of Bahrain leads. The hugely decorated youngster, Salafine Chespol, in second. And once again, she just gives Coburn a little message with her left hand, say, hey, listen, neither of us want to fall at this stage. You're clipping my heels. Coburn in third place. She's really become a fine, fine steeplechaser. And Lacar's Steve running very well for Australia in fourth as a little gap grows to Dero in fifth. And well, the cars, yes, I think the cars is in fourth place at the moment. You get the feeling that Dero might be closing down the Ethiopian, but the car's running well. At the moment, though, Secure is only three places in this race because the second heat was very fast indeed. The cars just have a little bit of trouble with the water jump there. So, yes, you've got to really make sure now that you're in this three. And for those of you following by way of the fastest loser spots, as we look at Clark, she was the one who had the fall, and she's desperately trying to close the gap on the athletes up front, but she's a, a long way back from an automatic spot. The slowest of the fastest losers is a safer who was on the podium here five years ago in 9.40. So we may well get a couple of fastest losers from this group, but at the moment, Chespol leads, Coburn in second, and they're arguably the class acts in this heat. With Yavi, the 17-year-old Kenyan, representing Bahrain in third. Lacaz is fourth, and then it's Dero with Schlumpf of Switzerland trying to close down the Ethiopian. But these four have a clear gap on the rest. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it pans up over the last 600 metres or so. Coburn, I think, is just doing all she has to do. Just uh, on the shoulder all the time of uh, Cespol, but... Uh, they're starting to pull away. There's a gap now, maybe of a metre or so, as they're going into the second to last steeplechase. Cespol really is starting to pull it on, and I think just behind, you can sense that maybe the rest of the other athletes are settling in to fight it out for third place. Yavi, I think, will be happy with that. And the cars, whether she can beat Yavi or not, is, is, if she does, it'll be a great performance. Dero coming through fast now. She realises that she's got to really make up the gap now on the last lap. They take the bell in this, the third heat of the women's 3,000 metre steeplechase. Only the first three guaranteed a place in Friday's final, but there are six fastest loser spots up for grabs, and there will definitely be one or two fastest losers from this heat, assuming the pace stays as it is. The Ethiopian, who's in fifth place at the moment, doing her level best to close the gap, but it's the hugely talented young Kenyan, 
Serafine Chespol who leads. Coburn, the Olympic bronze medalist in second. The 17-year-old from Bahrain, Yavi in third. And Lacaz of Australia having a really, really good run in fourth with Dero in fifth and Schluck of Switzerland sixth. These four just wanting to make certain there are no mistakes on that last water jump. So too Dero, who, well, lands with both feet in the water. Meanwhile, we know only the first three are guaranteed, so we can expect a little bit of a burn-up here. Lacaz coming past Yavi, the youngster. Coburn and Chespol, very, very comfortable qualification here, crossing the line side by side. Chespol from Coburn, Lacaz in third. Yavi will make it as a fastest loser, so too Dero. And coming home very fast there is Cassetta who we haven't seen featuring, the Argentinian. I think she may well make it through as well. Some good running here, and nice round of applause for Rosie Clark of Great Britain, getting up, having fallen early on. A decent recovery from there, but she will not be going through as one of the fastest losers. Daya Klashina, round number two in the women's long jump qualification. Six metres and 51 in the first round. The rain bouncing in the puddles on the back straight. Klashina looking to potentially improve her six metres and 51. She's comfortably in the top 12 at the moment. Well, that's nearer the automatic qualifying line. It'll be an improvement on our first round jump of six metres and 51. We're hearing Spanovic of Serbia has retired from the competition after her six metre and 62 jump. Puts her in fourth position overall when you combine the two pools. So she's hedging her bets, keeping her powder dry as we say. But that was better for Klashina. Six metres and 66. That's the best jump of the night so far. So, Klashina leading the way through both these qualifying pools. Griva of Latvia. Six metres and 50. Her first attempt. It is a distance of six metres and 36 at the moment. That's 12th in the rankings. So, Griva. Well, that's better. She has gone out to 6 metres and 72 this season. A lifetime best of 6.86 has stood since 2011. Didn't qualify for the long jump finals at the World Championships back in 2011 and 2013. Nor in London when the Olympics were here five years ago. So that's good jumping. 6 metres and 58. Moves up the rankings. Gets herself a little bit more comfortably into the top 12. Go back quickly to the men's hammer, Dilshod Nazarov. Second attempt, he fouled his first. Sailing out, sailing out. Oh, right on the line again. Oh, there seems to be almost using the. Uh, Qualifying line there as, as uh, something to aim at. Yeah, Olympic champion in his fourth attempt in 2016. Well, it must be a qualifying mark there, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. 75-54. Thank you, he says. Tracks it on. Daval Fedek. His first round throw, defending world champion. His, so look, his first round throw was 71 43. Oh, that's a massive throw, that's gone way over. Well, the world leader at the moment, that's a good throw. Big man, well, the poles are having a great competition in the throws. Oh, big, powerful arms just holding on to that. Sailing out, yeah. Well, 76, 82, yeah. What a big man. 
put his tracks on, as I said before. Well, over the back straight, we still have some of the other competitions going on. Yes, Steve, the women's long jump qualifying continues. Nobody over the 6 metre and 70 line. Tashina, the closest, was 6 metres and 66. But the music ramps up for a medal presentation of the men's pole vault. A wonderful competition last night, it really was. It was eagerly anticipated. And it didn't disappoint. The world leader there was Sam Kendricks. He arrived here in London. As the world number one. Oh, and how fitting. Sergei Bubka, the IAAF senior vice president. Was the outright world record holder till the man in bronze <laughs> took that off him with his jump of six meters and 16 a couple of years ago. No, no, la villainy. There he is. Picked up the bronze medal, five meters and 89. He opened at five meters and 65, and he really did battle for that bronze medal. He's had a complicated season with injury. He said afterwards he was delighted to pick up another world championship medal after a difficult season. Silver in 2013, and now four bronze medals from the world championships. The silver medal goes to Poland. Wojta Lysek took a bronze in 2015. He gave himself a fright, taking three attempts to clear 5 metres and 69, 65 centimetres, but went over 5 metres and 89 first time. Absolutely delighted throughout the whole competition, yes. A silver medal. But the gold medal went to the best athlete in the world this year. 10 out of 10 wins for Sam Kendricks of the USA. Olympic bronze in Rio last year. Became the fourth US vaulter to join the six meter club earlier this season. Five meters and 95. Serves in the US Army Reserve. And was understandably delighted to pick up another medal for the US team. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'hymne national des États-Unis d'Amérique. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United States of America. Ten years ago in Osaka, and he has tears in his eyes. Sam Kendricks picks up the gold medal in the men's pole vault. How long will this rivalry continue? They are very good friends. There's wonderful camaraderie around in the male pole vaulters section through track and field for the last couple of years. Kendricks, Lysek, and Labilini. Collecting their medals off the six-time World Outdoor Champion, Sergei Bubka. And the weather for them was a lot better last night than it is this evening. Certainly was. Here's a confirmation of that third heat in the 3000 steeplechase. The 18-year-old chess pole taking it from Coburn and the Cars. Yavi, Dero and Cassetta with a South American record tipping Schlump to that last fastest loser spot. A 
final will come on Friday. And there is the lineup. Ruth Chebet, the Olympic champion, the world record holder. Chep Koech, the third fastest in the world this year. Coburn, can she get amongst the medals once again? And how about that? Fente, who took that really bad fall in the first heat, she also made it through as one of the fastest losers. So in the women's long jump, Shara Proctor of Great Britain and Northern Ireland this is her third attempt. She's trying to get into a top 12 position here. The World Championship silver medalist a couple of years ago. Well, she opened with a 6.07, then a 6 metres and 26, way down on her season's best of 6 metres and 73. If you combine both of the pools, she's got to get near that 6 metre and 40 line. Well, she's perfect on the board. Is it enough to squeak her into the top 12? You saw the graphic of 18th overall. Has she gone over six? Well, six metres and 45. She's in 12th at the moment. The British athlete will have an anxious wait. Round three, Beration now in the uh, hammer for men. Ah, Oh, he's tucked that one out. Very close in second, 74.07. This looks a lot better. This is just over that qualifying, I think. Well, the World Student Game silver medalist had to leave it until his last throw. If he's got it, means that in this group A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men will get the qualifying distance. Let's have a look. Yep, 75-98. Third best throw, so he's qualified by right. Yeah, that's that's pretty good because, look, the conditions are not perfect. Look at that circle. It's like a swimming pool. And these are big, big guys hammering around. Whoa, control your... Look at that. I mean, they're big guys, but they're very agile too. But... Come on! Whoa! I mean, this is some of the, uh, I suppose, the ones that we didn't see. Meanwhile, back on the track. The crowd are really getting excited now. The men's 5,000 metre heats about to take part. Yes, it's an absolutely enormous field, this one. 21 men in the first heat. 21 in the second only the first five plus five fastest losers make it through to Saturday's final and as far as the Britons are concerned huge interest and expectation with the man who's loping towards that middle lane at the moment doing his strides Mo Farah the Olympic champion and defending world champion Lufthar Idris though could be a man to put Mo under pressure, he also goes in this heat. I don't think they'll be too interested in hammering each other in the heat, but Idris is very, very fast and has a lightning quick last lap as well. Mo Farah, halfway towards yet another golden double, he hopes, the only medal for Great Britain so far. But even though he's spent most of his life his early life in Great Britain, even he is feeling the chill this evening. It is very cold and it is still lashing with rain. Well, there are so many of them around on the far side of the track. We have two different starts. Here is the official lineup for the first of two heats in the men's 5,000 metres. Yomif Kajelcha, well, he's been around three or four years despite the fact that he's only just turned 20. Mo Farah going in this one. And also Aaron Kifle. Kifle is a, a really good cross country runner. And Mukhtar Idris, who many people believe could be the best of the Ethiopians to challenge Mo, assuming they both get through tonight safely and make their way through to Saturday's final. And there is Mukhtar Idris. Just missed the medal in Moscow. 
And in Beijing, but he's the fastest man in the world this year, former world junior champion over the 5,000 metres. He is really, really quick on the last lap. Kip Langat, world youth silver medalist. Pisa Modo there of Tanzania. He's got a half marathon best of just outside the hour. 12, Eric Jenkins, second in their trials. Good athlete there. PB 13.05, once again an American having a good season over the distance events. And I wager this could be quite a big cheer coming in. Already a three-time world champion and two-time Olympic champion over 5,000 metres. Roth is a good athlete, eighth fastest in the world this year. Seventh in the Rio final behind Farah last year. And then this guy, I first saw him run at the Youth Olympics in China in 2014 and thought what a talent he was then. He's only just turned 20, world indoor champion over the 3,000. Maybe that's his best distance, but he's pretty handy over the five and he's the fifth fastest in the world this year. That's Bashir Abdi, fourth in the European Championships back in 2012 over the 10,000 meters. So, massive field, all eyes on Farah and Idris. They won't be trying to outdo each other too much here, just safe qualification will do. Well, not often you have a 5,000 meter race where the athletes are asked to stand back from the line. There is quite a lot of noise here. And the crowd are actually having a little chuckle to themselves as the athletes once again get themselves ready. I think someone actually put their foot on the line and the official said, step back. Well, yeah, OK, fair enough. First of two heats in the men's 5,000 metres is underway. Only the first five guaranteed to advance into Saturday's final plus five fastest losers across the two heats, which have a combined total of 42 men running. Two absolutely enormous fields here. And Mo Farah, Kel Surpris, the Olympic champion, the world champion, is right at the back in last place, where he always likes to start these races. Well, Mo, I think, is doing all he has to do. Remember, it's five to qualify. Fairly comfortable qualifications, really, for the men's five. Even though there are big fields, you did say, well, 21 in this heat. And Mo knows that, really, the best thing to do is keep out of trouble. Keep out of the way of everybody in there, in the wet conditions, where they're going to really start maybe slipping and sliding if they start pushing one another. And get ahead when it matters towards the latter part of the race. It's FIFA, the European champion last year from Spain, who's leading, and he perhaps has decided that if it comes down to a burn-up, he might not be in the mix, so he wants to make sure it's a half-decent pace early on. Yeah, FIFA running well there. Just behind, you can see a group of about five or six there. Starting to stretch out, so the pace is good. I mean, he's picking it up and he's making it honest. Remember, first five and then the five passes through to the final. Kulang of South Sudan. I think the, the most recently formed country in the world. It certainly was last year in Rio. He's in second place on the inside. And in fact, he is the very first participant from South Sudan in an edition of the World Championship. He leads from FIFA with Kiplimo on the inside. Kiplady, very talented Eritrean, just having a little look round, and he now decides to come up onto the shoulder of the man from South Sudan. Well, they're keeping this pace going, it's good. I mean, if they could just move it on now, he's got his head down. It's a bit wet out there, and that's the trouble, it's raining, it's not conducive to running fast at the front, is it? And that's the problem. FIFA just behind him, the Spaniard, who did the early part of the uh, pacemaker in the last lap or so, just now being thankful that someone else is pushing it on, and they're moving away. Well, they are pretty well spread out here. 
as Kifle, who was fifth in the World Cross Country Championships this year, former World Junior Silver Medalist over the 10,000 metres. He leads. Mo Farah has moved up a fraction just to make sure that that gap doesn't grow too much. But this, for the, for the fancied men in this one, Steve, it is about getting through with minimal en energy expended, even though they will have a couple of days off before coming back for the final on Saturday. That's right. I mean, just uh, really what they've got to do, though, but it's awkward if you're in the first heat. You've got to move through fast because you don't want the second heat really to be faster than lose out your place as one of the fastest losers. Women's long jump qualifying continues. Round three, Salman Rath of Germany, eighth here in the heptathlon, but she's a tidy long jumper, six metres and 86 of the best. So looking to get into the top 12, that's better. Well, she opened with a no jump, then did six metres and 42. Remember, Britain's Shara Proctor was hanging on to a 12th qualifying spot of 6 metres and 45. So there's a few movers and shakers. Well, she likes it. So I'm going to guess she likes it because she's elevated herself into a top 12 position. So the multi-eventer, the German. 6 metres and 52 indeed. She gets into the top 12 comfortably. Britain Shara Proctor exits. Well, this really is a good pace for a heat in this 5,000 metres. 65 plus change. Kifle is keeping this pace hot, and that is why this group are fairly well spread out. FIFA's in second place. The Ugandan running well there in third. Mo Farah. Around about eighth or ninth place there as Jenkins comes wide on the outside. And I noticed about a lap and a half ago, Jenkins, who was second in the US trials, had to give Kajelcha a massive shove in the ribs to get himself out. And it is Jenkins, the American, who's deciding to get a little bit closer to the front, as Mo Farah does as well. And Kajelcha sandwiched between the American and the Briton. So the big names are just gathering a little bit, Steve. Yeah, they certainly are. Just give a name check to the guy in fourth there. We haven't mentioned him before. Gets a mode up, Tanzania. He's been uh, in the right place all the way. Small guy just ticking himself through there. So he's doing quite well. And Kifle's pace is pretty good. I mean, that head's down there. Look, you can see he's really working hard. There's the 2K, 5.32.57. That second, that uh, last lap, 66, a slightly slower. But because of that, you can see the pace now being injected a bit more. Yes, they were about a second and a half slower on that particular lap. As Kiplimo, the world junior bronze medalist from last year's 10,000 metres and world junior cross-country champion earlier this year in Uganda, he leads, and he's certainly not someone who's afraid to hit the front, the crowd in Kampala went absolutely mental in the Kololo Independence Grounds. It was one of the most memorable moments I've ever experienced in covering distance running. And it is the young teenager. He's only 16, by the way, which is hard to believe. Kiplimo leads, Kiple in second, FIFA third. As you said, Steve, really good run by Gisamoda of Tanzania with Jenkins and then Mo Farah and Idris and Kajelcha. That one a little bit quicker, 65 and a half. Yeah, yeah Kifle relinquishes lead there, but you can see that they're, they're still the rhythm is going. They're in Indian file. No one has decided to make a, a big move as yet. The pace was respectable, but nothing significant. Mo just looking over his shoulder there, shoulder to see who's behind him. Idris is there. The big two, I suppose, looking at each other somewhat there. The Jelcha, the very tall Ethiopian, just coming around the outside, Rot, there he is, the Bahrainian, looking at each other. They give Mo a lot of respect now, because really they could actually box him in at this point, but they're not doing that. In fact, you could just see Kajelcha, they're just holding his arm up to stop hitting Mo. Yeah, a few times in this race, athletes have had to put their arms up to say, hey, listen, just give me a tiny bit of space here. And they must have slowed a fraction here because virtually the entire field, give or take one or two who've drifted off the back, have come 
back together once again. And it is this very young Ugandan, very young, very confident world junior cross country champion who hit the front there. Yes, it was outside 66 or 66.3 there. So they are about to lap an athlete. I think it's the Mauritanian, Mohamed Sambe, who came in here with a, a very, very modest lifetime best. There he is, just towards the right of your picture there. He will be swept aside here. But great to see some of the smaller nations well represented here. And quite rightly, he does move himself out into lane three and let the rest come through on the inside. Led by Gisamolo, the Tanzanian, who's got himself a couple of metres up. Ibrahimov there, I think it is, of Azerbaijan. Another one of the few nations who is in second place at the moment. Oh, this is a bit of a move, isn't it, really, from Gisamolo? pushing it on as fast as he possibly can getting that gap now of about well five or six meters on this group yes he's running really well and in fact Tanzania I think had their first medal ever in the men's marathon I think it was Simba coming through another 66.2 is a quite consistent Simba coming through late for a bronze medal in the marathon as Jenkins makes his way up onto the shoulder of Yomif Kajelcha with Great Britain's Mo Farah behind him, and Idris is tracking Mo Farah. There they are on the left of picture, the two men fancied to battle for gold on Saturday. Well, it's Gesimodo doing very well. Mo moving up very well, as you said, Idris shadowing him all the way. Kefe now starting to move up. There's still a group of about 10 there with four laps to go. It is five to qualify, but I wouldn't want to be in that group really because any one of these athletes over the last two or three laps could muster a bit of a finish and upset the apple cart and I just noticed there Steve Mo Farah was getting a little bit of bumping there from Kifle and he's on the outside of Ibrahimov who you mentioned the Azerbaijani European indoor champion back in 2013 as Kiplimo this really young talented Ugandan comes up onto Mo Farah's shoulder that one a little bit quicker down to 64.9 and that's why they're now strung out just a little bit. So we have the Tanzanian, Gisamodo leading, Kajelcha with that long loping stride in second. Ibrahimov of Azerbaijan is third. And Farah looking cool and comfortable at the moment in fourth place. Well, we're coming down to the uh, decision time now for some of these athletes. Three laps to go in the heat of the 5,000. Remember, it's just the heat. And as Rob said, you try and go through this with as little expenditure of energy as possible. So some of these athletes have been holding back quite rightly, but now they've got to decide. Mo just looking up at the scoreboard there. And as he looked up, he saw that there's a mass, really, of runners still behind him. They're not stringing out. They're still there. And with very wet, slippery conditions and a few little elbows being dug into ribs. They just need to be careful that they don't end up causing each other a problem. That's McDonald of Australia comes from the back of the field to get himself in contention. Big, powerful looking man for a 5,000 metre runner. And watch out for Apti of Belgium, who's on Mo Farah's inside as the defending champion and reigning Olympic champion comes wide with Ibrahimov on the inside and look at that, Kajelcha second, Farah third and Idris coming up on the outside as they come round now with two laps to go. Two laps to go, I mean this really shouldn't be too much excitement here because it is just qualifying but it looks as if it could be a race the way this lot are going. Remember, we've got a group of about what, 12 athletes there with just five places to grab and it's the first heat they've run really sort of respectively but obviously the second heat could go a lot faster really Ibrahimov at the front that uh, Kenyan athlete by the way has been lapped very unusual for a Kenyan there was a faller there it was the Spaniard FIFA who went down I think and he's struggling now to get back in this group and now there has been an injection of pace look at this Kajelcha on the inside, Farah in second, Abdi's on the inside in that dark strip for Belgium, just missed the medal in the Euros recently, Idris on Mo Farah's shoulder, and all the big men are beginning to gather as they wind it up for the last lap. Just watching Kajelcha there, he just looks across at Mo, and every time Mo makes a move, he literally puts his foot down on the throttle, so he's holding Mo off, that's his intention I think over the last lap. 
Well, we can expect some chopping and changing here, especially as they're lapping athletes on the inside and outside. Kajelcha leads. Abdi of Belgium on the inside with Mo Farah on his outside. And as Farah looks on his inside, Idris comes up on his right-hand side. You can see how wet it is. That great tracking camera shot is spraying some water up in front of the camera. Kajelcha, Farah, Idris, Abdi, Rock trying to get in the mix on the outside and Jenkins is trying to mount a late challenge the American there'll be two athletes who might get lapped here we'll try and make sure that doesn't become confusing Kajelcha looking really good here pulling away with Farah in second place Idris on his shoulder very tight for the other spots but the key three athletes are clear and away very very good running from those three a fairly steady pace there and their pace just got them out of trouble towards the business end of that race we'll try and wrap up who took the fourth and fifth spots there but as for this youngster who's only just turned 20 Kajelcha really good running from him well, he's a tall lad isn't he as well he's a big lad and he was watching Mo all the way around that race I think they realized that Mo over the last lap was someone to watch but Kajelcha it's just the heat don't forget just the heat so it's not too excited but you know the, the Ethiopians I think have learned from that 10,000 meters what they've got to do if they're going to win and Kajelcha did as best he could and held everybody up looks rangy looks even quite quick Kajelcha Idris is also there, the other Ethiopian. So those big three went through. Mo still looks comfortable, though. Still has got another two or three gears there, really, if he needs to. But at the moment, fascinating for this 5,000 metres final. And it was actually Knight, the Canadian, who came wide on the outside with Kifle, the very good half marathon runner, taking that fifth spot. So we'll need to keep our eye on the times for the fastest losers. Watch Knight coming past Kifle here just in the closing stages Abdi of Belgium faded unfortunately for him so he'll have to wait and see he finished in sixth place just by a whisker from McDonald but Kajelcha and Idris and Farah running well within themselves there and Farah well he was almost motioning there. he was like listen Idris you've got room move out to your right hand side there was a lot going on behind them but the big three made that look very impressive Yeah, no problems at all. I mean, he's run the 10 already, so there's tired legs there, so he's not going to take too much out of himself in the heats of the five. He just looking across, see where everybody else is behind. They were closing fast, actually. If you watch now, the camera angle will show you that the other athletes, obviously, they're on the charge. But Mo's checking all the time, looking over his shoulder. Idris looks at him as if to say, well, I'm covering you. Idris doesn't seem to be too bothered, because he knows if Mo is there, he's not going to let anybody else pass. But look at this. Knight coming through of Canada, well, they were closing fast, but these three totally in control. Kajelcha looks very comfortable with this long, rangy youngster from Ethiopia, looking over here all the time. He, in fact, has to look down to see Mo. He's so tall. He's got a bit of a speed in his legs. A bit of sprint there. That could be a danger in the final for Mo. I don't know. But Mo, let's face it, the greatest distance run of all time, maybe. He's got a lot to live up to. Yeah, Mo has surely already gone down as one of the all-time greats. The debate will continue with regards to the fact that he hasn't broken or come close to either world record over the 5 and the 10. But in terms of being decorated, he is right up there. I mean, he's already a three-time world champion over the, over the 5,000. And he's going for four in a row. But Kajelcha is a very, very talented young man. still pouring with rain here but once again we've got a great crowd packed into the Olympic Stadium and another final to look forward to just a minute or two away from starting here it is this is the lineup for the women's shot put final and in the absence of the mercurial Valerie Adams there is a huge opportunity for everyone here to fill some big big shoes Li Xiao Gong has so often finished in the silver and bronze medal position. Is it finally her turn to come out right on top? Here we go. The athletes are introduced. 
but before that comes the all-important pageantry of the fanfare. one of Steve Ovette's favourite moments. So here we go. Waiting for their official introductions. Car Bian, big smile from her, national champion a couple of years ago from a world junior bronze medalist. What about Anita Marton? Bronze last year in Rio, world indoor silver, bidding to become Hungary's first ever male or female world champion. Melissa Berkelman, world and European junior champion, clearly in the mood tonight despite the driving wind and rain. Brittany Crew, national record holder and national champion from Canada. Didn't qualify for the final last year in Rio, gone one better. What about this? Li Zhao Gong, is it at last her turn after six major championships, silver and bronze medals? Her compatriot, Yang Diao, world junior silver a few years ago. She was fifth on home turf in Beijing two years ago. Michelle Carter, the Olympic champion, world indoor champion, and by the way, won both of those events last year in the very last round. Always gets it right come the big occasion. Geisa Arcanjo of Brazil, three times the South American champion. Great smile from her. And brilliant that these women are being watched by a virtual sellout crowd despite the weather. Yanni Fuvias Lopez, fourth in the Pan American champs in Toronto a couple of years ago. She has recovered from leukemia to be here today. What a story for her. Raven Saunders, what a menacing presence there. Not a smile, that's a, an aggressive, focused face. World Junior Silver Medalist three years ago. Danielle Thomas Dodd came through with 1842 yesterday, 24 years of age. And Yulia Letansiuk of Belarus, seventh in the World Championships in Beijing. But arguably, I think, on paper, Li Hao Gong, the multiple silver and bronze medalist, will be the favorite for gold. Will her nerve hold in the absence of Adams? Yomif Kajelcha, Mo Farah, Idris, Knight and Kifle are the automatic qualifiers. All the big names going through. Second heat of the men's 5,000 metres. Hewos Gebrehiwit doesn't start. That's a real shame for the Ethiopians. He is a multi-decorated athlete and has been on the podium in the last two editions of the World Championship. However, they still have good representation with Borega of Ethiopia. And there's Mohamed Ahmed, the Canadian. National record in the final of the 10, beating that set by Cam Levines. I know there's a really excellent growing distance running community in Canada. They've got an excellent 10K and marathon in Ottawa and Toronto. Tiernan there, the big Australian, he was 22nd in the 10,000. And what an athlete here. Andrew Butchart, sixth in Rio, Scottish record holder, third fastest Britain in history, and no shortage of confidence there. He's not afraid to run hard off the front. Chalimo, the cameras have just gone past him. He was a silver medalist in Rio last year. Massive, massive talent, the American. Mark Scott. U.S. Collegiate Champion over 10,000 metres earlier this year. Cyrus Ruto won the Kenyan Trials. Seventh fastest in the world this year. Moeen of Norway. Ryan Hill, World Indoor Silver Medalist over 3,000. What a great indoor meet that was in Portland last year. The Oregon State will do a fabulous job with the World Champs in 2021. And Selamon Borrega, check this out, he became world junior champion last year and world youth champion this year, still only 17. And Bahanu, Balu of Bahrain on the inside. 
Another massive field, 20 men for the five automatic spots. Second heat of the men's 5,000 metres. The top five, and remember, five fastest losers, and I think there are three or four men at least, all on 13.30 as fastest losers from the blanket finish in the first heat. All the big names coming through that one. And then we will hope to make sure that we bring you the fastest losers. So it's Jenkins, the American, who's the slowest of the fastest losers, but I think they're on course to be... Well, at the very early stage, they're on course to be quicker than that here. They want to make absolutely certain that as many from here as possible make it through to the final. So we're coming to the final stage of the women's long jump qualifying. Nettie of Canada, she's in 19th position. This would be a shock because she is the world number three athlete this year, the Canadian. And she needs to get herself into the top 12. No, she's just surpassing the six-meter line. Well, there's already been one shock with Britain Shara Proctor, a 6.73 jumper this year, not qualifying. And Christabel Netti, 6.92 in this World Championship season. She's not going to get into the top 12 with that jump. So it was just over the six meter line no six meters and 15 it's not enough it's about 30 centimeters shy the world number three goes so here's a summary of both the qualification pools combined together no automatic qualifiers over six meters and 70 tough conditions though Diaklashina leading the way with six meters and 66 and you see the names there Shara Proctor 13th misses out on a world championship final in her own backyard and Krista Bellinetti we've just seen and Shaquilla Saunders of the USA didn't bring her world championship season form either to London so a couple of big names gone the world's long jump world final for that women's long jump is on Friday and then qualification group A you can see the big queue Fideko Poland, 76 metres and 82. So seven automatic qualifiers from Group A. But Group B, well, they're due to be up and running in about 15 or 20 minutes' time. Well, it's Moeen of Norway who leads at the moment. And they've gone through the first K in a really respectable time there. 2.44, 2.45 with the Ugandan. Kisa in second place with the Kenyans closely following. Butchar is in around about sixth place, just tucked in on the curb. I think with Paul Chalimo on his outside, the American. So all the big names making sure they stay in contact with Moeen, the Norwegian who has decided to keep this pace honest. And that's 65-4. Uh, so. Good running from the Norwegian in the early stages. Yeah, Moen's doing a good job. I mean, we saw 65s, 66s in the most part of the uh, first of the qualifying rounds. It did pick up a little bit, obviously, over the last two or three laps. With Kajelcha pushing it on somewhat, but uh, this is a good move. They're spreading out. Cyrus Ruto on the shoulder of his compatriot. Two men side by side. Menjo, 37 years of age, he's done brilliantly to make the Kenyan squad again. He was fourth in the trials. Meanwhile, Anita Martin in the first round, brilliant bronze medal last year in Rio. Very, very difficult conditions there, just over the 18 metre line. She has gone 1963 this season. And she, along with Michelle Carter, definitely has a habit of being able to produce big throws towards the end of a competition. World indoor silver medalist last year. Had a really good indoor season at the start of this year, so she's got a wild card for the World Indoors in Birmingham next March. I don't think she's overly happy with that. Just waiting for the official marks to come up. 18.50, she's in the lead, but bear in mind she's only the second thrower to have 
put the shot. Now, Lee Hao gone. So many silver and bronze medals in the majors, and that looks as though she will go into the lead. What an opportunity with no Schwanitz and no Valerie Adams. Valerie Adams, by the way, was here at the start of the championship. She was performing some ambassadorial duties, and she's gone home now with arguably the most important business of her life, fulfilling the last two months of her pregnancy, and we wish her well as she heads towards an exciting new chapter in her life. But in her absence, Gong has a huge opportunity, and that's a good early throw from the Chinese athlete. She's in the lead. Michelle Carter, the Olympic champion, the world indoor champion. How dramatic was that in Rio last year? Snatching gold away from Adams with the very last throw of the competition. And that's a good, solid opener from the American. Big, powerful performer. Her dad, Mike, I think. We're very, very proud of her. He got a silver in LA, so I'm sure there was plenty of uh, banter around the Christmas table at the end of last year, as daughter outdid father by one single place, topping everyone in Rio. Carter got a bronze two years ago, 1882, so she moves into second place. Well, it, back in the uh, 5,000 metres, Moen is still up there in front working hard. Well, he's a marathon man, 210 marathon man, so he knows what he's got to do. He's got to keep this pace going as hard as he possibly can all the way. Just behind him, I thought at that time was Ruto and uh, Menjo, but they're still there, the Kenyans. It's Perega now leading, I think, Steve, the 17-year-old who's won the World Youth and the World Junior titles. And still, I think, is young enough to have another crack at the juniors in two years' time with Bailiou, the Bahrainian, who was ninth last year in the Rio final in second place, and the Kenyan in third. Ruto it is in fourth, I think, in the outside there. So, at the moment, that pace dropped a little bit, just as they did, it picked up again. Way right on the outside also, as you said, Buchad, he's the, the British athlete there. There he is, he's been running in lane two almost all the way, keeping out of trouble. He's coming through now. Salimo, United States also coming through. They're realising now that the pace is dropping a little bit and they're starting to bunch up. Paul Chalimo ran a brilliant race last year in Rio, didn't he? I, I got his last lap at something like 53.1, just a few tenths behind Mo Farah. And then there was a, a long anxious wait for the... Kenyon, who has happily made his home and his life in the United States, talking about Chalimo in second there, he had a really, really long wait because there was a potential disqualification, which looked as though it would have been very, very harsh at the time. And rightly, I think, Chalimo was reinstated, having initially been disqualified. So, my goodness me, his emotions went through the ringer en route to that silver medal. Abite, Rivera Treya, with the red shorts and the green. Best there coming through. Seventh in the World Junior 5000 actually last year. So he's a young lad. Oh, and Chalimo there almost fell, Steve. He had his heels clipped and he's having a conversation with Bailey of Bahrain. He's just had a word with him on his inside. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that again. He so nearly fell over. And in fact, just to add to the drama, Kazuzi, who was a silver a semi finalist in the 1500 last year, he's just walked off the track cutting a disconsolate figure, the man from Morocco. But Chalimo was very, very lucky there in that clipping of heels to stay on his feet. I'm out of Canada, a long striding Canadian there coming through. Oh, and a nut two and he's gone. gone down. Chalimo's gone down. Well, at the second time, and that is such a shame for Chalimo. He's taken one of the Kenyans with him as well. Let's have another look just to the left of your picture here. I can't believe that after just it's Menjo who's gone down with him after just about staying on his feet having been clipped the first time and Butchart by the way of Great Britain took a took a real momentum stall there but Chalimo trying to charge his way back through the field he's coming past Richard Ringer there what a disappointment there from the American especially having almost fallen on the preceding lap having said that I mean he is catching up and he is closing the problem with that is that you get up 
It's like the, uh, you know, the scared rabbit. You get up, you run really hard, then you find out over the last sort of two or three laps there's nothing left in the tank. And Andrew Butchart had his heels clipped there just about 10 seconds or so ago, and he too very, very nearly fell. Well, goodness me, there's all sorts of drama going on in this second heat. But Tiernan now, the big Australian, leading them through. Patrick Tiernan, my son used to run against him some time ago, so I know Pat really well. So he's doing a great job pushing it through. He must have saw there that there was a bit of problem behind him and taken advantage of that to just push it on. 22nd in the 10,000, he, he really didn't have his best race there. I think he's saving himself for the five. And he's doing the best he can, moving really well. But well, whilst Chalimo has managed to recover from that fall, Menjo, the 37-year-old Kenyan, has been spat out the back. He's doing all he can to get back to this group. Meanwhile, Tiernan leads. Really good to see the Australian having a go at the front. 63, so they have wound it up. Bailey in second. Ahmed's in fourth with the real youngster, Borrega of Ethiopia in third. Kisa, Chalimo and Butchart. So Chalimo, the faller, and Butchart, who stumbled, have come right back up into the mix here. So coming down to two laps to go now. Tien and the Australian leading through. Borrega, as, as Rob said, just coming out from the inside. He doesn't like being tucked in there. Bailey on the outside. Then Ahmed, as we saw, pushing and shoving a little bit on the outside there. Ruto, they're all there still, and they're still pushing and shoving going on. They've got to be very, very careful. There's Menjo, so far back. I don't think he's going to get really into the mix with two laps to go. No, a real shame for Menjo having fallen. So, down the back straight. Borrega, the 17 year old, leads. Bailey in second. Tiernan now is boxed on the inside. Chalimo and Bushtart, Bushtart uh, running on the outside, staying clear of danger this time after both of them having a, a little bit of a scare. Keese is just drifting off the pace a fraction. The other Kenyan is still in the mix, Cyrus Ruto, who won the trials. He's on the inside, and there's still a few elbows. Hamti just getting a little dig in the ribs from Andrew Bushtart, the Eritrean, as Ruto stumbles trying to make room on the inside. This is absolute carnage, this heat, Steve Ovet. <laughs> well, they've been slow, and now they're starting to pay the price, really. We've got the bell lap now. There's still a group of about five or six, maybe seven athletes there that can make that top five. So, Borrega, the 17-year-old, leads. Bailey of Bahrain coming up onto his shoulder. Tin in his third. Ahmed, who broke the national record in the 10,000, having a good run for Canada at the moment. Ruto, Chinimo, and Butchar. And these guys have a little bit of a gap back to the rest. Remember, only five are guaranteed to make it. The other American desperately trying to close the gap as well. But it's Borrega here, the 17-year-old, showing incredible maturity for an athlete as young as he is. He leads with Bailey in second. Tiernan's running a really good race here, trying to give himself every opportunity. Ruto and Bukhtar is out of this, and so too Chalimo. What a shame. They'll have to wait to see if they go through as fast as losers. Borrega, Bailey, Ruto, Tiernan, all making sure Bukhtar and Chalimo. Bukhtar, who you know, didn't fall but was stumbled, he will go through as a fastest loser. And so too Chalimo, I think, which is deserved because he went crashing to the ground. Well, my goodness me, there was all sorts going on in that one. But Borrega, at the age of 17, Steve, such maturity. Yeah, he's a danger, he really is. I mean, he's only 17, he will get better. Whether he's good enough at the moment to uh, trouble everybody in the final, we'll have to wait and see. But all credit, really, to Chalimo. I mean, crashing down, Rob, in a five, getting back up, getting there, and then qualifying, hopefully, as one of the fastest losers. If he does that, that's a great performance. Yeah, good, really good composure there. I think it, there's no doubt it disrupted the rhythm of both... Andrew Bukhtart and Paul Chalimo, and there you can see them on the left of picture there. A real shame. Well, I think Bukhtart may have realised, I think, that he was in with the chance of qualifying because it was a fast race. And talking to Chalimo just at the end there, I think, saying, look, we may still be in with a chance. Borrega, though, the 17-year-old, world youth and world junior champion, running really well. I think that might be a smile on the face of Andrew Bukhtart there. 
He's looking around. Ahmed was sixth, but he'll go through as one of the fastest losers as well. And how well Ryan Hill, Ryan Hill did coming through to take that fifth automatic spot. Chalima and Buktar just having a chat with each other like they're out for a Sunday morning six-miler. Well, looking at the times, Rob, I think almost all of the qualifiers will come from the second heat. So, yes, they, they knew what they were doing, some of those behind the leaders there. There's Chalima, bang, straight down. Just caught the heels and look, just behind him. Look, all the others really had to hurdle, go around them, stop, shut. Look. So, yeah, really a scrappy race, really, which is not good. Let's hope that the final, well, that's another rerun of that particular fall. Luckily, with the wet conditions, they slide rather than actually causing problems. Some of the athletes had to go on the inside there. Mm, don't think they'll be disqualified for that. They're just avoiding a problem rather than causing it. So, yeah, well, what can you say? It's just the heat. That's the whole idea. You should just go through as comfortably as possible. They're racing through here. And Tiernan, I thought, did really well. The Australian coming through, getting a place by right because he's already run the 10,000. 10, so good performance from him. I was really impressed with that 17-year-old Ethiopian. I'm not saying he's going to beat Mo Farah, but he ran a really topsy-turvy race with great maturity. Wow, we great drama on the track and great drama in the field here. Danielle Thomas Dodd, US collegiate champion this year, proudly representing Jamaica. Good to see them producing good efforts and getting in the mix here in the field events as well as on the track. Leader at the moment is Li Hao Gong with 19.16. Martin is in second place and we saw Michelle Carter launch the put out to 18.82. So that's around about the medal winning line at the moment. 18.70. And that is great stuff there from Danielle Thomas Dodd. Marton is currently out of the medals. This is her second round. Well, that was good. She had 18.50 in the first round, which early on looked as though it was putting her in a podium position. That may be a marginal improvement for the Hungarian. Hungarian team really buoyed by Balzash Barty's surprise bronze on the track in the 110 hurdles. Familiar green strip of Hungary. And Marton got on the podium last year in Rio and she's put herself in the hunt again. 1889, she's back in silver. Gong, still leading the competition. Can she finally, finally? become a global champion. Looks as though she's going to consolidate her lead there. Bronze in Berlin and in Moscow. Silver in Beijing. There's only one world championship medal missing from her collection. The Chinese are having a fine games actually here in London. And a little increase in lead there for Li Hao Gong. Carter, 1882 in the first round. She is in a podium position at the moment. Fifth best putter in the world this year. Just making sure that those hands are dry and have an excellent connection to the put. 20 metres last year in what was an unbelievable year. That looks around about the same as that which she threw in the first round. 31 years of age now. And it was one of the great moments in Rio last year. She really helped to put female shot putting on the map when she stole the gold from Adams in the very last round. 1886. She's very much in the hunt for another medal here. Well, the second round of or Group B, I should say, of the Hammer coming up shortly. And the conditions haven't really lessened, have they, really? It's getting worse, I think, here in the Olympic Stadium. We saw seven of the uh, previous throwers qualified by right. So maybe in this particular 
group we might see maybe another seven but it's, uh, as I said before very very wet out there Thomas Dodd here in the second round she's just off the podium at the moment with that 1870 her face is a picture of concentration well that looks fairly similar to her first round effort but she gets the red flag brutal conditions here they really are the Jamaican fans as we were coming in Rob very excited they've never had a Jamaican female shot put finalist in the world championships so as you mentioned we're getting quite excited about the prospect of somebody getting near a podium yeah she's done well to make this because she didn't qualify for either the final in Beijing or in Rio last year Lianciuk of Belarus very modest effort in the first round. She's lying in ninth at the moment, so remember, top eight to have a further three throws, although we are now only at the end of the second round, so two more opportunities, including this one. Well, she just couldn't quite keep her balance there. It is very, very wet, and the officials are actually in the circle at the moment trying to get rid of excess water. So one final effort for her to get into the top eight. Second heat of the men's 5,000 metres. The Rega, the 17-year-old, Bailiu, Ruto, Tiernan and Hill. And I'm pretty sure... I was going to say, I hope that Andrew Buchart and Chalimo, especially Chalimo going through after hitting the ground so hard in that heat. Yes, I'm pretty sure they both will make it. Mark Scott finishing 18th there. Moen, who did the early leading, down in 14th. And Gebri Hewitt pulled out before the race began. And as I said, Kazuzi, the Moroccan, pulled out uh, from that early stages of the race, that three or four. Here's a full list of the qualifiers for the final of the 5,000. And the good news is Andrew Butchart of Great Britain, who stumbled, and Shalimo, who fell so badly in that second heat, have made it through as fastest losers. And a great moment for Kimoy Campbell of Jamaica. He wanted to prove that Jamaicans can run over three and a bit miles, and he'll be in the final and have another opportunity to show us that on Saturday. So on the track shortly, a second appearance this evening for Isaac Makwala. He did his solo run. He ran under the time required to get into the semi-final stage. He'll start this first semi-final of three semis in lane number one yeah any any problem Catherine a, a man of his quality I know we touched on it earlier any difficulties that tight inside lane it is the tightest line on the in the track of course but I it's, it's the wet that's bothering me the the um, the officials have been out and the most they've been squeezing water with their big equipment is out of lanes one and two it is absolutely deep in those inside lines Rob so Talent-wise, no. Well, we'll see what's going to happen, though, with just the first two and the two fastest going forward to the final tomorrow. And the world leader, Isaac McQuala, there you see on the caption, will start on the inside line of lane one. So the first of three semi-finals in the men's 200 metres. Here's the lineup for the first semi-final. Nine in this one, Isaac McQuala ran that solo effort to qualify. He's the fastest man in the world this year. He's in one. Simbine of South Africa in four. Nathaniel Mitchell Blake of Great Britain. Isaiah Young in seven. Rashid Dwyer, the Commonwealth champion, out in nine. Absolutely loaded, and you'd expect nothing less. Dwyer trying to keep warm here, the Commonwealth champion. Pan American Silver. His best, 19.80, yet to go inside 20 seconds, and despite the unfamiliarity of the cold, he'll have to get out hard. Shota Izuza, world junior champion seven years ago, got a relay silver in Rio last year. Brutal qualification here with only two going through. Isaiah Young won his heat and looked good. Second in Monaco in the Diamond League, so he's coming into some good form here. 
Kyle Grove. Semi finalist for the Pan American Games in 15 and the Commonwealth Games in 14. 21 9, his lifetime best coming this season. Nathaniel Mitchell Blake, 20 0 8 in his heat. Semi finalist last year in Rio. Can he harness the enthusiasm of the crowd and make the final? Carney Sambine, fifth in the 100 last year and this year, was a roommate of Van Niekerk's last year in Rio. Maybe some of the golden touch of his compatriot will rub off on him. Filippo Tortu, European junior champion over 100 metres. Teenager, what a moment and what a stage for him, 2034. Well, we're used to seeing lane two as the tightest inside lane here. David Lima, semi-finalist in the Europeans last year over 200, but right on the inside is the fastest man in the world this year. Going through that familiar pre-race ritual, a few words to someone up top and a few words to himself just to get that focus. He wears that distinctive luminous right sleeve. Huge field here. Makwala in one, Lima two, Tortu three, Simbine South Africa four, Mitchell Blake five, Gro six, Young seven, Izuka eight, Dwyer, Jamaica on the outside in nine. Can Makwala cope with the deep pools of water and that tight inside line to make the final? First two guaranteed a place in the big showdown. Tough conditions here and brutal qualification. Young is going well, third from the left-hand side. McQuana storming through on Lima. But Isaiah Young running really well here. And look at McQuana on the far side. Mitchell Blake going well in third. McQuana takes it. Mitchell Blake in third and Young, I think, got second. So Mitchell Blake will have to wait to see if he goes through as the fastest loser. Young got out really well there, but Makwala coming through on the inside. He was raising his arms in the air. Bit of confusion as to which of the two got it. Actually, Young was given the nod over Makwala. Mitchell Blake was third, but Makwala is in that final. And how well did he do there from lane one? Yeah, it's a great run from lane one. In fact, I think the, the, the crowd have adopted him now, haven't they? They've seen him twice this evening. They gave him a big cheer as he came through there. It's a hard lane to run, especially when it's wet as it is, really. And Young got the overall uh, verdict, but good on Makwala coming back again and making that final. He started wonderfully well on the inside line, as did Mitchell Blake and, of course, Young. But look the way Makwala swept into the home straight. This is a man on a mission. Hence, when he crossed the finish line, he punched the air like it was a final. He was desperate to make the 200-meter final. Isaiah Young, working hard for that, the American. He knew he'd have a challenge inside him. But Young takes it in 20.12. And McQuala there, what a shot. 20.14 seconds, splashing his way through the inside line. And the British athlete, Mitchell Blake, 20.19 seconds. That's good running from the British athlete. Will remain to be seen if it gets him through in the tough conditions but semi-final number one well we expected a lot and they delivered yeah and we can be greedy in our lust for fast times can't we but in brutal conditions like this with pools of water all over the track and driving wind and rain that was good running the american ran a fabulous first 100 meters gave himself a brilliant platform and actually, the first three were miles clear of the rest. Shot put. Michelle Carter, 18.86 in that second round. Can she improve on that and give herself a chance of moving up to silver or gold? She is the Olympic champion. Looked a little better, that one. The lead is Li Hao Gong with 19 metres 16. Seven women, I think, this season have gone over 19 metres. So it has been a modest season 
by their high standards. 1914, Carter, the Olympic champion, moves up to silver. Back into the hammer now. Milwaukee of Poland. Qualifying, as I said before, 75-50. Oh, controlled it well. And it's gone out close to that mark. Difficult to see. In fact, it's gone well over it, actually. So this is a good first-time clearance for this man. Three bronzes at the last World, European and Olympic game so let's just have another look he's very happy it's so wet up there they're literally running out of the circle that's a good throw 76 85 so qualified straight away on the first row Isaiah Young and Isaac McQuala are in the final good running from the Botswana and in his second 200 meters in the space of two and a half hours Mitchell Blake not too bad at all 21 9 in the driving wind and rain he'll have to wait to see if he makes it through as the fastest loser Hi, Hero the Hedgehog is not heading towards the Oh, I thought I thought for a minute he was heading towards the water jump for the steeplechase. Good work there. I, I, th I think the, the steeplechase pit is the next uh, next destination for him, surely. He's a bit of a character, the guy in that costume. Apparently they've flown him in from the States. Give him time. He'll gravitate with his little dinghy, I'm sure, towards the uh, <laughs> steeplechase. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to some serious stuff now. The second of these heats in the men's semi-finals and we've got a chance to have a look at uh, Johan Blake in this one well all eyes will be on him now that the big man isn't in this bolt not man running the 200 meters so obviously a big opportunity for those that have been in the shadow in the past to now come into the light there's Johan yellow vest obviously there he is running in lane seven well, we saw nine athletes in that previous heat because of the inclusion of McQuala never really seen Nine athletes before Kath. I think it's been the first time for some time in the previous semi. Well, it's not too often you have a nine lane track that goes all the way around the 400 meter distance, is it? So we have to take advantage and get the nine athletes in that first semi final. But we're back to lanes two and nine for well, the second semi. And this is a man to look out for as well. Do you have Jareem Richards? Look really, really good in qualifying. First in his heat, 20 0 5. Third in the NSA's champion, Trinidad and Tobago champion. There's the lineup. Blake, as I said, going in seven. Richards in five. Remember, it's just two to qualify. Really hard, really cutthroat qualifications for this semis. So there you are. Wilson, Hughes, King, Richards, Semi, Blake, Volko, who run really well actually in these qualifying in the 100 meters. He's here. And then Sunny Brown. I think Sunny Brown, this man here on the outside, is a real talent. Young Japanese athlete. Well, with Tokyo coming up as next world championships, they're going to be looking really good in the sprints and in the relays, as we've always seen. Here he is, double youth champion in the sprints in 2015. Japanese record holder at the one and two. Well, on the inside of him, another youngster, Jan Volker of the uh, Slovak Republic. Slovak record holder in the one and two. European silver indoor medalist. And then the great Johan Blake. Sprint double silvers in 2012, behind the great man himself. And at 2011, he became the youngest man ever to win the World Championships at the 100 metres. Shaking his shoulder, it is cold. Sydney Siemi of Zambia, clocked 9.88 for the 100 at altitude in Lusaka. And this is the man I think may challenge Johan Blake. Jareem Richards, Trinidad and Tobago. Really looked very, very good in qualifying. Yep, he knows he's in great shape. And on the inside of him, Kareem King from Oregon University. Well, that's uh, really a university that produces some great distance runners. Mo Farah's over there, but this man is very fast too. Fourth in their trials. Zarnell Hughes, well, listen to this. The young Brent, just 22 years of age. Fifth in the World Championships at 200 meters. Slide by with injury last year, but back now to great form. And just on the inside from Switzerland, Alex Wilson, 
transferred from Jamaica. Well, sometimes it's hard to make the Jamaica team, isn't it, really? Now he's running for Switzerland. Semi-finalist in the 100 metres in these championships. Right. Just two through to the final. All eyes will obviously be on lane seven. And maybe, maybe there is a possibility that uh, Jareem Richards could give this man a bit of a run for his money. But let's wait and see. We go down to the box. Second semi-final. Wilson, Hughes, King, Richards, Samey, Blake. Volko, Sunny Brown. got a good start he's very very fast going well on the inside is Richards also coming out the outside Sunny Brown of, of Japan running well on the inside you can see Richards now starting to pile it on Richards is pouring away two or three meters clear just on the inside of him Blake running well but on the outside Sunny Brown getting that all-important second place well Blake run out of it at the moment well, we said this man was good, and he really did show there. The winning time, 20.14. He really did come off that bend and had a what, one or two metre gap on everybody before he even started coming into the straight. It was a good run. Jareem Richards concentrating on the 200 metres here. It's come through a win for him of 20.14 seconds. The rest of the field were three tenths behind. So Mitchell Blake, the British athlete at the moment, looking good. Sani Brown, though, the Japanese athlete, 20.43 seconds. He ran a tidy bend as well. At this point, King, the American, had gone through the first 50 metres as well. But look at Richards. It really was a good run. Johan Blake never really got in the mix in terms of the top two. He's run 100 metres here. He's just missed a medal in that event. But the world number two of all time, Blake from Jamaica, struggling to maintain his form. And Catherine, he's living very, very dangerously indeed because he's the slowest of the fastest losers at the moment. Great run by Richards. But when you bear in mind you've got Webb, Van Niekerk, Lemaitre, Guliev and Tolbert in that third semi-final, the chances of Blake making it through as a fastest loser are very, very slim. How good was that from Richards? strange this year that the Jamaicans in the sprints especially the men's are not doing as well as we thought really obviously you know it's it's something which they pride themselves on at the moment but I don't thought that Blake would produce a better performance than that to be fair he's trying to get back to his best Johan Blake he's had major injury problems over the last couple of years and he decided to double here which was a surprise to me considering the form that he hasn't had the past couple of years so as Rob said he's living dangerously in that second non automatic qualifying spot Thomas Dodd, she has made it through to the fourth round. Fourth place at the moment with 1876 in the third round. She's been pretty consistent with her series so far. Now, can she challenge a medal position? She needs 1889, that's Marton of Hungary, who's currently in third. Position she finished in in Rio last year. Well, it's another good throw, but not close enough to challenge the Hungarian just yet. It's Gong leading from Michelle Carter, the Olympic champion. So here is the Hungarian, who's lying in third. She's had three really solid throws so far, but we know at her best she can go way over 19 metres. She has a habit, that one won't see an improvement, I don't think. She has a habit, a bit like Michelle Carter, of being able to improve towards the back end of a competition. The pressure seems to bring out the best in the 28-year-old. 34 Hungarian titles when you combine her indoor and outdoor bests. Important figure in Hungarian athletics. So it's the... 
weakest of her efforts so far, but she remains in the bronze medal position. Now, Michelle Carter. She's got better with every round so far, as you can see there. 1935 is the lead from Gong. Gong led right from the very start with 1916 and then improved. So she's, had, she's only got to find around about 20 centimetres or so to give herself an opportunity. Looks around about the 19 metre mark, that one. It's not quite firing on all cylinders for Carter, the Olympic champion and world indoor champion, but we do have to bear in mind just how wet and cold it is this evening here in London. I'm reliably informed we were promised some kind of heat wave in August. I can assure you, if you've never been to Britain and you're reading the stereotypes, it doesn't always rain here in the summertime. We do sometimes get a bit of sun. I don't know where you've been, Rob, but I, I've lived in most of my life and it does always rain in the summertime. <laughs> 1903, no improvement for Carter. She stays in the silver medal position. And what a story emerging here if Li Hao Gong can at last become a global champion. Bronze in the Olympics in Beijing, silver here in London, silver in Beijing in the World Championships two years ago. Puff of the hand chalk there. No throw for Gong. Two throws left remaining, but she is in the gold medal position at the moment, but Carter's close on her heels. Well, there's the result of that second semi-final. Great run from Doreen Richards, really. Tore away from everybody else. Sunny Brown came right through on the outside for Japan. Johan Blake, as Rob said, living very dangerously with his third semi-final to come. So the start list for the third and final semi-final of the men's 200 metres. Wade Van Niekerk is back. He starts in lane number six. Olympic bronze medalist Christophe Lemaitre in eight. And the impressive Daniel Tolbert in between them in lane number seven for Britain. So here's your full lineup then. That's Sakonas of Greece, seven times the Greek champion at this event of 200 metres. He'll start in lane number nine, 20.37 seconds to qualify for this semi final. Lane eight, Christophe Lemaitre of France has hard fought bronze medals from two successive Olympic Games. 20.29 seconds this season, 1980 at his best six years ago. Lane number seven, the crowd will give a big roar for Danny Tolbert. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, second at the UK Championships, but ran a personal best of 20.16 seconds to qualify, eighth on the UK all-time list now. And lane number six, Wade Van Niekerk, the Olympic 400-metre champion, now twice a world champion, over the 400-metre distance, looking for that very unique two and 400-metre double. He starts in six. Lane five, Amir Webb of the USA, the US champion this year. 20.09, an impressive 20.22 seconds in his heat. And then in lane number four, also impressive in the heat, Ramil Guliev of Turkey, 20.16 seconds, equal fastest in this race from the heats along with Danny Tolbert in seven. The Turkish athlete, good lane draw in lane number four. Lane three from the Ivory Coast, Will Three Coffee, African champion of both sprints in 2014, 20.41 this season. And then completing the lineup in two from Guyana, Winston George, their record holder and the new South American champion of 400 meters. So lanes two to nine, the first two to get to the final tomorrow. Wade Van Nieker in six, Tolbert in seven, Lemaitre in eight. Guliev of Turkey in four. Wade Van Niekerk said he conserved energy last night in the 400 metre final. It was a little bit chilly for him. Well, it's not warm here tonight, and he's got to get himself in the top two to continue the assault of the two and 400 metre double. So it's a clean start in the rain. The American web going well in lane number five. 
Webb's up on Van Niekerk at the moment. Tolbert's going well. The match of the French athletes going well. And it's the American, Webb in lane number five. Guliev's running well inside the American. Van Niekerk's got some work to do here. Well, unofficially, 20.18 seconds. Ramil Guliev of Turkey, well, he ran that 20.16 seconds, the impressive qualifying to get to this semi-final, and he ran a super race there. It really was a good run. Wade Van Niekerk had a little bit of work to do in the home straight. The American was running well in lane number five as well, Amir Webb. So we'll wait for the times to come through as Guliev's confirmed in 20.17. Do you know what, Catherine? I said to Steve, at the, I said to Steve at the uh, at the start of that race that Guliev is an underrated athlete. He, he is so good when he gets it right. The American, by the way, was by far the best starter, and we can now confirm Van Nieker will make it as a fastest loser, which means that Johan Blake doesn't. But Guliev ran really well there. Webb got right up on Van Niekerk on that bend, Catherine, and I think that might have contributed to the South African looking and maybe feeling tight. Well, you can see the expression. It's hard to tell with the weather so bad, and I can promise you when you're sprinting with rain in your face, you're not going to look the best. But Van Niekerk's digging deep. He knows he's not in an automatic qualifying spot, and as Rob said, he has got through 20.28 seconds in third. Amir Webb just ran out of steam in the past 20 meters, last 20 meters, didn't he? But Guliev, 20.17 seconds. Well, 20.17 seconds in pouring rain. Really, really cold conditions on a wet track. That's got to be worth sub-20 coming in the final. And as Rob said, really underestimating this man. Well, he's run 19.88 seconds a couple of seasons ago. He's been under the magical barrier before, but it was impressive in the rain. And there's confirmation. Guliev and Webb automatically through. Well, I guess from a neutral's point of view, we do have, as we see a confirmation of the lineup for the final, we do have Makwala and we have Van Niekerk in that final. But Guliev looking very, very impressive. And Van Niekerk won't have a decent choice of lanes. Well, he won't because the final will be seeded off your position semi-final qualification so Makwala will potentially get a better lane draw but that is a 200 meter final to look forward to round five Danielle Thomas Dodd US collegiate champion this year off the podium at the moment well that looked better that did look like it could be an improvement now remember Third place at the moment, I think, is Marton of Hungary with 1889. So has Thomas Dodd given herself an opportunity to produce a first medal for Jamaica in this event? I think she likes it. Oh, look at that. By a couple of centimetres, Thomas Dodd moves up into a podium position. Marton is down to fourth. Gong is our leader, giving that a big roar, and that's better. She's tickling the 20 meter line there, and that will extend her lead by quite some margin. So often, she has finished the bridesmaid to Valerie Adams' bride, and she's giving herself a massive opportunity to finally call herself a global champion. Look at that, 1994. Carter has a habit of leaving it late, but the gauntlet has been well and truly thrown down by the big Chinese woman. That's her compatriot, Yang Giao. Rain continuing to pour down here as we head into the sixth round. What a good throw that was from Li Hao Gyeong, who started this as the favourite. So fifth here for Gao. Bronze 
is with the Jamaican on 18.91. This needs to be a big improvement from the 24-year-old. No. Just creeping over the 18-metre mark. But that won't be good enough to challenge for the medals. It's been a good competition, this one. And are we going to have the last round fireworks that took Michelle Carter to gold at the World Indoors in Portland and in Rio. So it's not to be a medal for Gao, and she presumably will hope that her compatriot does indeed secure that first seemingly elusive global gold. Liancia, she's had a, a bit of a wobbly card really, three no throws, only two efforts registered, 18-12, Remember, it's 1891 for a place on the podium. European indoor silver medalist a couple of years ago. No, way, way short. Not to be there for the Belarusi athlete. And one by one, they are falling by the wayside. Carter and Gong. The athletes in silver and gold medal positions. We're heading towards the conclusion of this one. Thomas Dodds in for a slice of Jamaican history, potentially, as they've been disappointed with their performance elsewhere. Brittany Crew of Canada. 1858. She'll need a lifetime best if she is to move up into a medal position. Really cold here in the stadium. Incessant rain. No. It's been a good competition from the Canadian record holder and national champion. She fouls out with that one. No improvement there. So, we are getting close now to the very important throws at the end of this competition. What a fantastic effort from the 24-year-old Jamaican to give herself the chance here of consolidating on a first ever World Championship women's shot put medal for the Jamaicans. 18.91 at the moment. Oh, that's another good put. She's producing her best at the end of the competition. I don't think that'll be far enough to challenge Carter in the silver medal position, which is 19-14. But it was a good throw from the big, powerful Jamaican woman. She was absolutely delighted with that 18-91 in the preceding round. 18-76. So her best effort is 18.91. Now then, she just has to watch here and hope for her sake that Anita Marton, who's now down in fourth by two centimetres, doesn't manage to find the tiniest improvement. Olympic bronze last year, and that's big. Oh, my goodness me. The Hungarian so often delivers in the last two rounds of a major competition and that may well be heartache for the Jamaican who might be seeing a medal snatched away from her. Carter's in the silver medal position with 19.14. Oh, she's gone ahead of the Olympic champion. Marton will be on the podium. A silver medal. Fantastic. Now then. Just as Marton so often delivers her best throw at the end of the competition, can Michelle Carter reproduce what she did in Rio last year and Portland last year? 1994 for gold. Can she reclaim the top spot? Carter with a big one. No, I don't think that's going to be an improvement. She is going to finish on the podium. But it is not to be the gold this time. 
poor Michelle Carter. What a fantastic throw that was from the Hungarian to move ahead of the American Olympic champion into silver. So at last, at long last, as Carter celebrates bronze and Marton, who's absolutely delirious with that late charge for silver, at last, Li Hao Gong is a global champion. Brilliant. Bronze at the Olympics in Beijing, silver here in London. Silver in Beijing two years ago. She is the champion of the world. Can she finish with a flourish? Oh, it's another good throw. It could be. It could be her best of the evening. 1994 in the penultimate round. She's once again getting close to the 20 meter line. And I think there are tears there. She's done it. 1989, her two best throws coming at the end of the competition. And after a lifetime, a lifetime of missing out on top spot, at last she fulfills her dream and becomes a global champion. Li Hao Gong completes her world championship medal collection twice the bronze, once the silver, but this time she is the queen of the shot put. Anita Marton, a late charge for silver, and Michelle Carter, well her dad will be so proud. It was double gold last year, indoors and out, this time the silver, and the emotion overcomes the 28-year-old from China. And what a fabulous championship they're having in the throwing events, they really are. Li Hao Gong is the world champion. And I'm sure watching from the other side of the world, Valerie Adams will not be in any way disappointed there with the lady who succeeded her as champion. Li Hao Gong is the world champion at last. Anita Marton takes the silver and Michelle Carter, the Olympic champion, bronze this time. So, two big finals to come on the track. The men's 400 hurdles will be first and then the women's 400 meters. Keron Clement bidding for an unprecedented hat-trick of world titles over this event. No man or woman has done that before. This is the final of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Driving wind and rain here, but nothing will dampen the atmosphere ahead of this great race. The drum roll in the stadium. Here they come. Hussein, Capello, bronze medalist last year. TJ Holmes from the World Junior Bronze. Samba, Varhol, Keron Clement, Moet of Jamaica, Santos. A brilliant race in prospect despite the brutal conditions. Does history beckon for Keron Clement? He will arguably be the favourite for this one. There he is, Olympic champion at his third attempt. Twice a world champion, but they came a long time ago, Osaka and Berlin. And equally, what about the Norwegian? He's had the season of his life, Karsten Varholm. Started out as a world youth champion in the octathlon. Now found his best event, and no Norwegian has ever got a world or Olympic medal in this event. Catherine, Clement is the favourite for this one, but he can't afford to make any mistakes because Varholm in particular is in cracking form. It's going to be fascinating because Varholm there in shot, he pumps himself up, slaps himself in the face, gets the crowd going and goes out like a rocket. And I don't think he'll do any different tonight because that's how he runs. He's been in wonderful form on the flat and over the hurdles. But Keron Clement, well, he, he himself is fast over the 400 metre flat. He's been around for so long, Keron Clement. This would be a wonderful achievement. It really, really would. He's six foot two tall. He's now mastered the 13 stride technique.
which is what Ed Moses fought in all those years ago. He has the height, the ability, and the basic speed to do that. It's going to be a fascinating race, and he's got the perfect lane draw, Keron Clement, in lane number four. Totally agree with everything you said, Kat, and Rob, but as an outsider, I'll go for Yasmani Capello, who looked really comfortable coming through the heats and uh, semi-finals, and he's an outside chance, yes, but you've got to give the man credit. It's a possibility. Yes, Capello is a fine, fine performer. And we should also mention, well, we'll be doing the full light lane lineup shortly. Samba of Qatar, huge PB in the semi-finals. He's so new to the event, officially, according to all the statistics that we wade through before each session, that semi-final was only his third outing, per, his third official outing over the distance, which is ludicrous when you think he's knocked out of 48-31. So... A big opportunity for Kaeron Clement, and there's Capello, as Steve Ovet was saying, bronze medalist last year, European gold as well, fifth fastest man in the world this year, prowling and waiting. Very, very cold this evening. Times maybe not quite so important, but this is a great race in the making, it really is. There's Kaeron Clement. As Catherine was saying, it, it, it's hard to believe that he's been around as long as he has, that he's still only 31. That shows you how young he was when he first exploded onto the scene and became the world champion 10 years ago. Well, indeed, and it was such an explosion onto the scene as well. Grew up in Port of Spain, in Trinidad and Tobago, but has been representing the Stars and Stripes of the USA wonderfully well. 31 years old, can he win his third world title 10 years, as you say, Rob, after his first in Osaka? It's a big, big piece of history waiting for Keron Clement, but he's got to beat everybody, including Varholm. And watch when he gets introduced to the crowd. He really gets himself and those in the stadium fired up. That's what he did in Oslo, and he set a massive lifetime best over the four flat. New national record, 44.87. It's got all the makings, this one. It's the final of the men's 400-metre hurdles here in the Olympic Stadium. We're heading towards the climax of day six. Kyron McMaster, the world leader, disqualified and showing a little bit of inexperience, the man from the British Virgin Islands, not clearing one of the early barriers correctly. This is the official lineup then. Keron Clement, the Olympic champion, the two-time world champion, starts in four. Varholm, who's had an absolutely outstanding season for Norway, he's in five. Samba, this really young and experienced athlete from Qatar, going very well in six. And Capello on the outside in eight. Bronze medalist last year in Rio. Here we go then. Kareem Hussain. European champion back in 2014 only made the heats last year in Rio he's done fabulously to make the final Yasmani Capello we know he's got big talent and can finish on the global podiums but he'll have to go out really hard because there's intense quality on his inside TJ Holmes third in the US champs only 22 a big find for the United States world junior bronze medalist a couple of years ago Abdurrahman Samba, this really tall 21-year-old from Qatar, looking cool and relaxed in the shades and the cap. Massive, massive PB in the semis. Could he be a surprise package here? Carsten Varholm. This time looks a little bit nervous. That's restrained, by the way, for his introductions to the crowd. There, there comes the chest pumping. And Varholm will come under pressure from the favourite, the Olympic champion, bidding for an unprecedented hat-trick of world titles. No man or woman has ever done it in world championship history. The American in four. Kamar Moen, second in Jamaican championships. Another youngster, just 22 years of age. Looks relaxed, excellent form in the semis. Nothing to fear for him. Yuanda Santos. Younger brother of Lugelin, who went out in the heats in the four flat. PB in the semi-finals. Great to see. Here we go then. A real sense of anticipation 
on a cold night in the Olympic Stadium. Santos, Dominican Republic, two. Moat, Jamaica, three. Clement, USA, four. Varholm, Norway, five. Samba, Qatar, six. Homs, USA, seven. Capello, Turkey, eight. Hussein, Switzerland, in nine. Does history beckon for one of the fastest men in history? Or can a man having the season of his life cause a big upset? Final of the men's 400 meter hurdles. too hard too early well we'll find out in around about 15 seconds big big lead Capello going well second from the outside and now Caron Clement starting to close really good running by the youngster from Qatar but Varholm has put himself in the driving seat here he leads but Clement is closing the Americans coming can Varholm hang on Capello on the near side so tense so tight Varholm He's the world champion. Capello and Clement do battle for the silver. Wow, what a shock, what an upset. An absolutely brilliant run there from the Norwegian. He went eyeballs out right from the start. We expected the Olympic champion to close and he did. We expected Capello, the bronze medalist from last year to close and he did. But somehow his stamina held firm and he makes history for Norway. They've never won a medal in this event before, and they have done now. It's gold. What a wonderful run. He went out as expected like a bullet. Keron Clement was flying. His 13-stride pattern was going wonderfully well, but he lost his whole momentum, the American, into the 10th and final barrier. He couldn't recover. He didn't have the turnover of speed off the 10th barrier to pull back this young man. That was an outstanding run by Warhol. What an absolutely superb season. 48.35 seconds. The world champion. I don't think you can believe it. He just shakes his head down there at trackside. I think he came off that bend, at least two or three metres clear of everyone else, and that set the panic in, I think. They all started to seize up. They were coming at him, as you said, but they were a few mistakes over the last hurdle. Capello, I thought, left it just a little bit too late. He was perhaps, out of all the athletes, coming the fastest. Wow, Clement. Well, you know, what a performance, really. We were hoping maybe that he would produce that wonderful triple championship goal but not really Warhol was absolutely flying we knew he was going to do it guys didn't we he always goes out so hard down the back straight Clement had him in his sights Capello was running wonderfully well on the outside nice and controlled just as Clement is at this point you can see the two taller big guys but coming into the home straight Warhol had he'd, he'd set up such an advantage Clement on this point was coming back and was on a roll and was chasing the four or five metre deficit, but it was coming into the final two barriers. Clement absolutely lost his stride pattern. Watch the American here inside the Norwegian. He's on a hunt, he's on a hunt. No, took it on the wrong leg, lost his momentum. The Qatari, I think, was absolutely falling all over the place. But look at that finish. Strength, stamina, drive and desire and rewarded with a gold medal. That is such a brave way to try and win your first global title. Well, he's announced himself now because it's all very well setting PBs in the Diamond League, but you've got to come and do it on the global stage. And we have to say, Sambu was all over the place there. He's clattered that barrier. Otherwise, he was very much in the hunt for a minor medal. Clement is one of the greats. He's a two-time world champion. He's the Olympic champion. So what a brilliant, brilliant victory for Varholm. Not only to do it, but to beat one of the men who's been at the top for a decade. 
And Clements, the seven fastest man of all time, if you look at the, t the top ten list with his 47-24. But you can see here the contrasting fortunes. Vorholp yeah. in his own lane, focused on the big prize. The two big guys outside him messed up their final barrier. Their hope of gold was gone, and it's the shock. Have I? Have, yeah, I just, no. have I just become world champion? <laughs> it was a shame, though, Samba, as you pointed out, Rob. He was coming. He was the young Qatari. But he hit that hurdle so hard. It literally just jarred him back, and he just never recovered. Well, Volheim took it from the word go. And that's all you've got to do in a world championship. Set the pace. Let, you, let the others chase. Look at his arms. He's pumping so hard here. He's working so hard right from the word go. But he didn't slow down. That's the essence of it all. It's the mixture of experience and youth in this shot, isn't it? Keron Clement, as you mentioned, Rob, 31 years old. Volheim, 21. Samba from Qatar, 21. And Capello... And Clement, the two experienced athletes, that's going to take about four and a half weeks to potentially settle in for him. <laughs> that is one of the great images of the championship so far. A man who's delivered the performance of his life, beating one of the greats, and so surprised that he's been able to do it. Carson Walhoe was the, the World Youth Octathlon champion just four years ago, and he's now standing as a mature 21-year-old as the world champion in the 400-meter hurdles. Such is the testament to the program of age group championships throughout the IAAF. He's come through different events, but I think he's found his home now. History for Norway rather than the United States. Karsten Varholm is the world champion. He couldn't believe it when he crossed the line, but he will when he stands on top of the podium. Capello, another major medal for him, silver, and the Olympic champion and two-time world champion, this time has to settle for bronze, Karen Clement. Well, it was a super race, but the last final this evening is the women's 400 meters. So, just as the men's 400 metre hurdle final was pretty unpredictable or hard to call, this women's 400 metre final is exactly the same. But before that, Stevie? Well, back in the hammer. We haven't had many qualifiers from this, and this is the world number three at the moment. Try to qualify. No. Oh. Yeah, he's not over the line, but the actual distance is we've only had one qualifier, the wiki of Poland by right from this with his 76.85. There were seven qualifiers from the previous A heat, so maybe, maybe he might get through. We'll have to wait and see when they bring up the scorecard. 75.09, so he's spot. 50 centimeters down, sorry, five, uh, 50 centimeters down on that qualifying distance. <laughs> so the athletes do the long walk from the call room to a track. I can assure you, when you're walking towards a major championship final, it seems a little bit further than it has done in previous rounds. But they're the athletes then for the women's 400 metre final. NASA from Bahrain there walking through the shot. Phenomenal qualifying, just over 50 seconds in the semi final. Yeah, yeah, but no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alison Felix will start in lane number five, the defending world champion. Three times a world champion over the 200 meter distance. Oh, well, he's, he's being kitted out, Rob. He's being kitted out. <laughs> I'm going to make a guess here, Catherine, that by the end of the night, that will be upturned and it will be full of beer. <laughs> Kero Clement posing for the selfies. Good to see that he's taken that so graciously. One last final to come, and what a final this could be. The final of the women's 400 metres. Like so many finals at this IAAF World Championships, eagerly anticipated because you just don't know which way it's going to go. The athletes will line up in lanes two to nine. And Popo of Zambia 
McPherson of Jamaica, Miller Weibo of the Bahamas. That was NASA running through from Bahrain. Phyllis Francis, Williams Mills, Jackson, both representing Jamaica. Alison Felix from the USA, arguably the most complete female sprinter of all time. So fast, over 100, 200, and 400 meters. She's looking to defend her world title here. But in doing so, she renews her battle with Shawna Miller Weibo of the Bahamas. The world number one, Alison Felix this year, 49.65 seconds. At her best, 49.26 at a couple of seasons ago. Two tenths of a second ahead on lifetime best. The Miller Weibo will start two lanes outside her. But it really is, guys, a tough one to call this. You look back to the World Championships two years ago, it went Felix Miller. In Rio last year, it was reversed. By the narrowest of margins, with Miller Weibo throwing herself at the line, winning it by just a few hundredths of a second. It's a really fascinating battle, this one, because Alison Felix is one of the most majestic looking sprinters I think we've ever seen, male or female. She's been around at the top for such a long time, but I know she's still performing brilliantly and she could obviously still win this one. Are we just beginning to see maybe, maybe as she gets towards the last couple of years of her career, Mila Weibo, those few years younger, just 23 years of age, is it now her turn to shine and take that mantle from Felix on going forward? Well, it's a good ask. I mean, but I still think this is, as you said, one of the greatest sprinters we've ever seen. I agree. And I spoke to Kathy earlier. I think if she'd have run the four earlier in her career, we could have seen her getting close to that wonderful world record. But at the moment, you're right. She's not perhaps at her best. But having said that, it's still a talent, Rob. You can't dismiss it. Well, I have a qualification went uh, to the form, but really, the big champion there, Nazarov, getting through very comfortably. Don't forget that it was the first of that uh, qualifying rounds, Group A, which seemed to have got all the qualifiers through. There was only one from the previous B group that got through. But as I say, only the uh, only the main qualifiers got through fairly comfortably. So back to the final event then this evening. That's Phyllis Francis, his fifth in Rio last year, 49.96 this season. Only four women have gone under the magical 50 second barrier. Francis is one. What's your instinct then, Catherine? You've, you've won an Olympic medal in this event. You've watched them around the world for the last few years on the Diamond League circuit. Felix and Miller Weibo, how do you see this one? I genuinely don't know. In coming into the championships, I've been calling it as Miller Weibo just because of her 200 meter speed this season. There she is, 21.91 seconds she ran in Eugene at the Diamond League. But Alison Felix has a habit with even less races to get it right when it matters. It is too close to call the final of the women's 400 meters. With the form of Nasser of Bahrain in lane number four in the semi-finals as well, running 50.08. It's going to be an absolutely cracking final. So, we'll introduce the athletes shortly, and then potentially in just under 50 seconds' time, we'll have our world champion. There's your full lineup three athletes representing Jamaica, two Americans to line up for the women's 400 meter final. Some familiar names, some new names. And starting on the outside, Kumbanji and Popo of Zambia. 50.6 seconds this season, African Games champion in 2015. 
Lane number eight from Jamaica. Stephanie Ann McPherson, bronze in 2013, fifth in Beijing, 50.56 seconds this season. Lane number seven from the Bahamas, the Olympic champion. 49.44 seconds at the best. Olympic champion starts in seven. Phyllis Francis from the US in lane number six, 25 years old now. Just shy of a lifetime best that she set last year, this season. And in lane number five, the defending champion. Three times a 200 meter world champion, a winner of a record six Olympic golds, five in the relays, one in the individual, and a winner of nine world championship gold medals outdoors. Lane number four, 19 year old Sala Edi Nasser of Bahrain, born in Nigeria, her mother's Nigerian. Her father is from Bahrain, in wonderful form in the semi finals. And then the evergreen, Novely Williams Mills. This is her sixth World Championships. Her best position, bronze back in 2007. And completing the lineup, Sharika Jackson. Bronze two years ago. Behind Felix and Miller, she'll start on the inside line. So, the final of the women's 400 meters Jackson, Williams Mills, NASA, Felix, Francis, Millian, Miller Weibo in seven. She's the world champion, a national record of 50.06 seconds for NASA of Bahrain. And Alison Felix picks up the bronze in 50.08. Mila Weibo in fourth. Well, we just have to look at that again. It was drama right into the end, wasn't it? Whatever happened to Mila Weibo there? She was leading, looking comfortable, and then all of a sudden, something went. Maybe it was a hamstring. Let's just wait and see. Let's have another look. It was a great run up until that point where she had the problem there she is third from the left hand side as we see it and by the way nasa ran a brilliantly controlled race she's third from the right hand side here saved it all for the last 150 and came through brilliantly felix was aggressive down that back straight i thought and maybe went a little too hard look at miller weibo here on the left hand side she flies round that top bend beautiful running watch nasa there third from the right hand side you can see how powerfully she's coming through and at that point francis begins to close watch miller weibo it felt as though something just went it's around about here she starts limping and i'm not even sure it was a stumble something just went Looks and then a bit like a hamstring rob really a slight hand because she's holding her left leg pretty badly and she's limping beyond the finish line at such a shame it really is here you'll get a closer look talk about injury denying her right on the verge what a shame for her well we'll keep an eye on the replay here felix had nothing more to give francis sensed that and passed a teammate Mila Weibo here was in control. She was glancing to her left. What happened to the Olympic champion? Oh. 
Look at that left leg, Catherine. She wasn't able to extend it as she got towards the line, and she would had a little grimace there. Not the usual grimace, I think, that you'd see from an athlete suffering from lactic in the last few metres. I think something went inside her left leg, and that was the problem. Phyllis Francis, though, a personal best performance. The American delivered when it mattered from her point of view. That's the fastest that she's ever run, lowering her personal best of 49.94 seconds. Fifth at the Olympics last year. It was a great run by the 25-year-old. Whatever was going on around her, she kept her focus and she powered through. Well, that was Another a real, medal for really, the US team. Sorry, Kat, that was a very strange race. I mean, the two big favourites really, both of them really suffering badly. I think Felix went off far too fast. Doesn't have the scene, doesn't she have the strength, as I said before, over the last 100 metres. Did all she could. She faded badly. But Miller Weebu, I'm still uncertain as to what happened there. I think she was really tired, but also she might have had a slight fall. I don't know whether she tripped over her own foot. Well, you know what? This is the second major championships in a row that we need to wait to hear from Shawne Milowebo as to what happened at the finish line, right? After Rio last year and in this final here, Alison Felix, you don't often see her grimacing and running like with a face like that. But it is another championship medal for Alison Felix. The bronze in 50.08 seconds. Well, Phyllis Francis, well done to her. It was a super run by the American out of lane number six. Yeah, it's it, a, a fantastically timed run for her. We were talking about it being maybe a changing of the guard, and OK, it didn't go to Miller Weibo. I actually think she may have caught her the top of her left foot on the ground, and that may have caused her a problem. But Alison Felix didn't catch her foot, and she finished third. So... Is it a changing of the guard? Is she going to be capable of coming back and challenging the likes of, of Francis in the future? Or NASA, who came through brilliantly for the silver medal with a national record. She ran a really, really smart race because she was so conservative on the first 150. And that is why she did so much damage to the rest of the field in the last 30 or 40 metres. Well, that's disappointing for Miller Weaver, but I think maybe the conditions, Kath, might be against it as well. I mean, it was very cold there tonight. Maybe she cramped a little bit. We don't know. We just have to wait and see. If we had a head-on shot, that would be absolutely wonderful to see if she potentially did trip over her own foot when she was bringing it through, because let's not forget she does have a habit of tiring badly, understandably so last year in Rio, running a lifetime best performance, and her legs just gave way when she fell over the line. So did she have lactic again? Did she trip over her own foot? Well, the shoes are off. It's definitely something on that left foot, and I, I just wonder... Not sure whether we'll get a chance to see it again. I just wonder whether something went or did the problem come when the top of her left foot hit the ground and then she lost all of her momentum. It was a problem, what, 15, 20 metres or so from the finish line. Up until that point, she'd run a beautiful race because the way she accelerated, Catherine, around that top bend was fantastic. Here we go again. Let's have a quick look. This time we concentrate on the feet. The left down, the right down, the left down, the right down. Oh, she, I think she did. She caught, she caught the top of her left foot there. And that's what, I don't know whether it then caused an injury or it just cost her momentum. I think it caused an injury because surely if it was just a stumble, she still would have finished way further up amongst the medals. That tip of that left foot just hit the ground and that caused the problem so potentially a trip and the top of a foot that's caused Miller Weibo not to get a medal here at these world championships 50.49 seconds in fourth but deservedly Francis NASA and Felix and Phyllis Francis on a lap of honor well her younger sister also competes in track and field Second at the US Championships this year, getting through their brutal qualifying system. She's the world champion, but what a talent NASA of Bahrain is. She's been 
her own. She brought her own national record down from 50.88 seconds, which she set in Rio, 50.08 in the semi-finals, and 50.06 at 19 years old. That is a wonderful performance by her. And once again, in the last few events of these World Championships, we have talking points, we have drama, but of course, we have world-class athlete athletics. Wow. Gold then for Francis, a personal best run. Well done to her, 49.92 seconds. A silver medal for Bahrain, for Salah Edi Nasser, and Alison Felix picks up the bronze for the USA, another World Championship medal for the American. Kat, is that Felix's gold, silver and bronze at the event? Well, she's got nine World Championship medals outdoors before that one. So, yeah, she's obviously... In the 400? Won. Yes, it is, I think. She because got... She won in... Beijing. And she got the silver in Daegu. Daegu. So she's got a full set. But let's take nothing away. I know we're not. Let's take nothing away from this woman. Fifth in Rio last year. And she came through and beat them all. A really powerful finish. She'd been put under pressure by Felix early on because Felix actually caught up that stagger and went too fast in the early stages. Francis was coming through and was closing on Miller Weibo. And then, as we know, the Bahamian, and they'll be so disappointed for their young star on the island. She just clipped the top of that left foot and all her momentum went. We don't know definitively whether she suffered an injury, but anyway... Phyllis Francis did what she needed to do, and not only going under 50 seconds, but a lifetime best, the biggest performance of her career, and she's beaten one of the all-time greats in Alison Felix into third. Well, the Americans are having a great time in the sprint so far, aren't they, really? Well, they've got 50 medals in total now. In Bahrain, two medals with that wonderful medal there in the women's 400 metres. So you can tell it's 10 o'clock at night though, UK time, and it is cold because for one athlete only to go under 50 seconds in a major championship final is indicative to the conditions and of course to the issues that Shawne Miller-Weibo had. Yeah, especially when you bear in mind the quality of the lineup for that final as well. It really was of the highest possible order. Well, as we said at the start of the evening, it may be wet and cold, but there was nothing to dampen our sense of anticipation or excitement ahead of this great night of athletics. And it really has delivered. Li Hao Gong, gold at last for the perennial runner-up or bronze medalist in the shot put. Phyllis Francis here coming through to beat both the pre-race favourites. We were all talking about Miller Weibo and Alison Felix and her compatriot producing a fine finish and a lifetime best. Didn't manage to get among the medals in Rio last year. But she comes out on top tonight in the Olympic Stadium. And what about that four hurdles as well? Kaeron Clement, we thought he was closing in on an unprecedented hat-trick of world titles. It would have been his first since Berlin in 09. And it would have been 10 years on from his first world title in Osaka from 2007. But Karsten Varholm will be the toast of Norway tonight. The last we saw of him, he had a Viking hat on. I reckon it might have a cheeky beer or two in it by now. He'll have a great night of celebration before returning for his medal presentation tomorrow. Still raining. It's that fine rain now. It's, it's not quite as hard as it was at the start of the evening but a really really cold night and all credit to the athletes in the three finals we've seen this evening they really have lit up the track with some great performances and each evening as you said Catherine we've had some really really good races and sometimes it, it's, it's been the unexpected athletes have come through to win and surely that's the very essence of why we get so excited about a major championship because it isn't always the favorites it's not always clement it's not always felix or miller weibo another good night
So that medal ceremony for the women's 400 meters will be tomorrow. And it will be interesting to see because Shawna Milawebo is due to line up in the semi-finals of the 200 meters tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether what she says officially about that race and also whether she does take her place in the lineups for those 200 meter semi finals. And good that McQuala came through earlier this evening. Very odd to have one man running a solo heat, but he did 2020 and then came through from lane one, Steve Ovette, to book his place in the final. Oh, certainly did. And the crowd really warmed to him, I think. They thought that he'd been hard done by. It. He had to come out, prove himself. He did just that on his own in tough conditions. Then he got lane one again in the next round and then still come through for second place and pumping the air, which shows his real determination to prove a point, I think, more than anything else. Prove that he was in the right and that he deserved his place in the final. And we can confirm the Koala will be in lace, lane six for the 200 metre final tomorrow night. Van Niekerk, who only got through as a fastest loser, remember, will be in lane three. We've thoroughly enjoyed this evening. Let's have a little recap of the drama that's unfolded over the last couple of hours. So let's bring you up to speed with how the medal table looks and that is very very impressive reading if you are an American four golds five silver six bronze 15 medals in total Wow eight more than the Kenyans who are also having a fabulous championship Venezuela have got that gold of course courtesy of Yulimar Rojas in the women's triple jump still just the one solitary gold for Great Britain Mo Farah is through to the final of the 5,000 metres. Ugandans have a silver medal. A couple of bronze medals for the Netherlands. Daphne Skippers will hope to add to that in the 200. Well, what a great, great night it's been. Li Hao Gong finally.